The Fake Girlfriend's Billionaire Match, a Caprock Canyon Romance Book 4. Written by Bree Livingston. Copyright 2019. Narrated by Lorena Hoops. Audio copyright 2022. Chapter 1. Walking into his study, Bear West held a microwave meal for one. Normally, he'd just go to his room and park in his recliner, but paperwork was calling, and since he was the boss, his name was the only one it knew. Setting the tray down, he hit the power button on the desktop and took a bite of... He stared down at the food. Well... It was something covered in gravy. Man, he missed Bandit's cooking. But Bear couldn't complain or fault the guy. Finding out he had a grandfather he'd never met, and a sick one at that, Bear would have left too. After a few more bites, the screen flickered to life, and he pulled up his email account. He was a simple fella, living in the middle of nowhere. How on earth did he manage to get so many emails each day? I thought I'd find you in here. His sister, Carrie Ann, sauntered into his study and parked herself across from him. I told you I could cook for you. Shrugging, he took another bite and forced himself to swallow it. That's all right. I'm good. He'd purposefully avoided her since she'd moved in while her home in town was being built. All she seemed to want to talk about was his love life, or lack thereof. She sighed. You are so stubborn. And you aren't? He laughed. You're a dog with a bone. I don't want to be involved with anyone. I care about you. You're in this house alone most of the year. It breaks my heart. There is a woman out there desperately needing a man like you to love her. And you need her. Angela. Bear quickly stood. All right, look. I've been as nice as I can. But you're living here, and it's my house. I shouldn't have to tiptoe to get peace. If and when I decide to date, it'll be on my terms and when I'm ready. Got it? Her lips pinched together. Fine, she said, her voice a little louder than normal. Is something wrong here, guys? Israel asked. Bear and Carrie Ann looked to the door where he stood. No, they replied at the same time. No, Bear said. Carrie Ann was just coming to find you. I've got the monitor right here. If Camry wakes up, I'll tend to her. Have fun on your date. He smiled. Israel approached Carrie Ann and hugged her from behind. Thanks, man. I owe you one. She's finally asleep. He kissed Carrie Ann's cheek. There are bottles in the fridge to warm if you need them. Bear waved his hand. That was part of his sister's anatomy he didn't want to even think about. Got it. Carrie Ann resisted Israel's pull for a moment holding Bear's gaze. Finally, she lowered her eyes and left with her husband. The girl loved him, but sheesh, she was a pest. He sat down hard in his desk chair and went to take another bite of his meal. Not great hot, even worse, cold. He pushed the tray aside and began weeding through his email. Mr. Matchmaker, why was he still getting these? He could have sworn he'd wiped his hands of that website. Knowing his sister, though, she'd signed him up again. The next time he saw her, he was putting his foot down once and for all. Either she'd quit or something. He clicked on the unsubscribe button within the email, and it opened a new tab with advertisements to use their services. Hovering the pointer over the second unsubscribe button, he found himself pausing. Carrie Ann was already giving him grief. The holidays would be there before he knew it, and all of his family would be under his roof for six full weeks. 
they'd be paired off and running after their children, and Bear would just be the odd man out. It hadn't been so bad the last few years, but with Bandit gone, he'd be the only man carrying the fifth wheel. Instead of unsubscribing, he clicked on the account button and tried the username and password his sister had given him. They still worked. He huffed and closed the window. What was he thinking? A matchmaker site? There were better uses of his time. Bear closed the web browser and pulled up the financial records for the ranch. His accountant wouldn't be happy with him if his receipts were a jumbled mess come April. He lasted all of seven minutes before his mind wandered back to the matchmaker email. The idea of risking his heart again made him sick to his stomach. He couldn't do it yet. Did he have to risk his heart? His brother Hunter had hired Reagan to pretend to be his fiance. Granted, it had worked out that they fell in love, but that didn't mean Bear had to. And he didn't have to be engaged, either. His family would be tickled if he was even dating. Pulling up the web browser again, he typed in the website, entered his login, and filled out the easiest information first. Then he stared at the blank space that asked him to give details about himself. What should he say to find a woman to pretend to date him? Who would even want him? He lived in the middle of nowhere on a ranch. Angela could barely stand a puppy, let alone a whole ranch full of animals. He couldn't handle another woman like her. How could he make his profile interesting enough to get attention, but horrible enough to weed out women who wouldn't fit? They wanted a picture, too. He clicked on the file that held some of his photos from previous years. Scrolling through photo after photo, he finally came to one that even he cringed at. He was covered in mud after a cattle drive and sporting a beard. It would take a woman with an ability to see beyond the photo to even read his biography. After he uploaded the photo, he started on the biography, starting with his ranch. He didn't want a real girlfriend and he wasn't looking for love. If that's what they had in mind, they needed to move on. Then he paused as he considered what it would take to get a woman to leave her family, fly to Texas, and pretend to date him. Money. It needed to be good. A healthy sum, but not too crazy. Finally, he typed in 200,000. The terms were set. The time frame was settled, and at the end, they'd go their separate ways. The pointer hovered over the publish button as he thought through his plan. He'd be lying to his family, bringing someone into his home and asking them to lie too. Just then, tiny cries came from the baby monitor, reminding him he'd be the single lone wolf of the holidays if he didn't do it. His time was up. In one swift motion, he clicked the publish button, pushed out of the chair, and said a silent prayer. For now, he'd tend to his niece and hope his wild scheme didn't come back to bite him. Chapter 2 Sinking into her couch, Winnie Fordham felt lower than dirt. She took all of it, Mom. All of it. Winifred Fordham. Law voice, the exact thing Winnie didn't need from her mom at the moment. You need to tell your father. I made you promise not to tell him before I told you what happened. Give me a little time to talk to Tammy. Maybe she'll have a change of heart and return it. If Winnie's dad knew the money he'd given her was missing, he'd call her dream done and expect her to show up in his Houston law firm promptly by the next business day. Something she desperately didn't want to do. Law was dry and boring. It didn't give Winnie the joy cooking did. 
Her mom inhaled, and Winnie could picture her pinching the bridge of her nose. I don't know. This is big. Where are you going to find that kind of money? Didn't you have a location picked out? Winnie pulled her open laptop onto her legs and sighed as she scrolled through the pictures of a downtown San Antonio space right on the river walk. The rent was ridiculous, but location was everything. It was perfect. Her hand brushed against her trackpad, and the next thing she knew, a new tab opened with Mr. Matchmaker's website filling up the screen like she needed that. Life was complicated enough without a man in it. Yeah, Winnie replied, as she watched profiles seamlessly change from one person to the next. I love it, too. The landlord is currently in the process of evicting the current tenant. And that's a good spot for a new restaurant? Her mom's voice rose an octave. If they didn't make it, What makes you think you will? Winnie barked a laugh. I'll start by not failing four health inspections in a row and sending three tourists to the emergency room for food poisoning. Oh, wow. Just remember, my specialty is divorce. Not saying I couldn't handle a restaurant lawsuit, but don't make me have to. She paused, exhaling heavily. Back to the missing money. Just tell your father. A photo slid to the center of the screen, and Winnie's eyebrows lifted to her forehead. Who would put a photo of themselves looking like a mountain man on a website like this? Out of curiosity, Winnie clicked the photograph, with the intent of mocking him to ease some of the stress she was under. I'm not telling Dad, and you can't either. Using the wheel of her mouse, she scrolled down, landing on his biography. Texas Rancher. Maybe that wasn't mud after all. She'd been to a cattle farm. Big animals produced big poop. Her mom groaned. Then what are you going to do? I don't know. She reached the end of the biography, and her mouth dropped open as she sat up. No way. What? Her mom's question came out in a rush. What's wrong? The guy was willing to pay someone $200,000 to pretend to be his girlfriend for the holidays and cook for his family. Who offered someone that kind of money to fake date them for six weeks? Better yet, who answered something like that? Perhaps someone who'd just had their dreams swiped from under them? Winnie, are you okay? Now her mom sounded frantic. Shaking her head, Winnie replied, I'm fine, just I noticed something else about the location, and I'm sad that I might lose it. Oh, okay. For a second there, I wasn't sure what happened. She paused. Winnie, your stepdad and I can loan you more money. You can pay us back when your restaurant is up and running. Let me think about it, okay? She stared at her laptop screen. Maybe she wouldn't need the loan. Maybe it was fate that the dating website had popped up right at that moment. I think I'm going to get some sleep and try to call Tammy again tomorrow. All right, but think about it seriously. We love you and we don't mind. Thanks, Mom. I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. They said their goodbyes as Winnie pushed off the couch and began pacing. As she debated the pros and cons, she threw glances at the laptop, trying to decide if she should throw her name into the ring. $200,000? That was twice what her dad had given her. She could pay him back and have the money to open her restaurant then she wouldn't have the deal with him looming over her head. And what were the chances that the man was looking for someone who could cook? She stopped, put her thumb on her mouth, and chewed on it. Would it hurt to reply? It wouldn't automatically mean she'd be chosen. Her chances were probably slim at best. 
Taking a seat on the couch, she set the computer on her lap and began typing out a response. When she got to the end, she frowned and erased all of it. She pulled up his photo again, studying it. Now that she was really looking at him, this was a man who worked hard. A ranch wasn't easy, and it was a business that required tough owners. He wasn't looking for love or a girlfriend. He'd been clear on that. For a brief moment, she wondered why, and then dismissed it. Did it matter? She had a restaurant to open. He held the key to the funds she needed. And she didn't want or need a man gumming up her life. This time, she took her time with the response. She mentioned the picture, pointing out he had to be using it to weed out women who couldn't handle spending time on a ranch. Then she told him about her dream of opening her own restaurant. That she liked simple things like hot tea in the afternoon and nights by a fireplace. They were things she was sure he'd like, but nothing was a lie. She figured there'd be plenty of women lying to him. When she finished typing it out, she read it over, and once she was satisfied, she hit send and closed her laptop. If the man chose her, she'd be back in business without her father being any wiser. If he didn't, well, she'd cross that bridge when she got to it. For now, she'd wait and see. Chapter 3 Pulling into the restaurant parking lot, Bear found a space and parked his truck. He hooked a finger between his shirt and tie, trying to loosen it. Why had he put a tie on anyway? He loosened it enough to take it off and tossed it in the seat next to him. He opened the driver door, grabbed his Stetson, and stepped out. It was only a few weeks before Thanksgiving, but he sure couldn't tell by the weather. Sunny, nearly 90, and as pretty a day as he'd ever seen. Of course, according to the weather guy, supposedly the next week they'd be seeing snow, which explained all the traffic. People wanted to take advantage of the nice weather before they were hit with a storm. His phone buzzed against his hip, and he pulled it out of his jeans pocket, easing down on the edge of the driver's seat. Hey, Wyatt. The furniture just got delivered. They're unpacking it now. Good timing, too, since the new hires are supposed to arrive soon. Yeah, I'd hoped it'd be there before they arrived, just in case anything went wrong, Bear said, pulling his phone from his ear and checking the time. Uh, I probably should go. My meeting is in a few minutes. Yeah, you never said what that meeting was. What are you doing in Lubbock anyway? No way was Bear telling Wyatt the whole truth, that he was meeting a potential pretend girlfriend. I'm meeting a cook, since Bandon won't be around. I thought it would be good to find someone to take care of all that. He paused, feeling the anxiety build. I don't want Reagan taking time off from the bed and breakfast, only to find herself cooking for us. Since Bandit was dealing with family stuff this year, and he wasn't going to be spending the holidays at the ranch, someone was going to have to step up and handle a lot of kitchen time. Bear had offered to help him if he needed anything, moral support, or financial, but Bandit wanted to handle it on his own. If there was one thing Bear understood, it was that. Sometimes a man just needed to do things in his own way and in his own time. Oh, well, that makes sense. Have you heard from Bandit? Nah, but I didn't expect to, really. Finding out he had a grandfather was a shock. Nodding, Bear replied. Yeah, and finding out he was the only heir was another. All that money makes things complicated. It's about the same as winning it. True. When Bandit told Bear about the money, the first piece of advice he'd given was to keep it close to the vest. There were too many people out there who would take advantage of him. Bear knew that firsthand after he and his brothers and sister had won the lottery. Bear stood, placed his hat on his head, and shut the door to the pickup. All right, let me go. I'll talk to you later. Pocketing his phone, Bear strode to the restaurant door. 
As he opened the door, he pulled off his hat. The picture Winifred Fordham had sent him didn't do her justice. He'd thought she was striking, but wow, she was a knockout. She certainly didn't look 29, which is what she'd listed as her age. There was a 10-year spread in their ages, but only for about a week. The rest of the year, it was nine. Winnie Fordham, he asked as he reached out to shake her hand. I'm Bear West. That's me. The instant her skin met his could only be described as electrifying. His pulse skyrocketed. She'd called herself average, but their definition for that was miles apart. Gorgeous was more like it. Dark red hair that hit just below her jaw, emerald eyes, and porcelain skin. What he liked most was that she'd worn jeans and a t-shirt to meet him. She was his kind of girl. So far. Uh, is everything okay? She asked, gently pulling her hand free. Oh, yeah, great. He smiled. More than great. If this worked out as he hoped, he'd have the prettiest girl in his arm during the holidays. It was only a few weeks before his family would gather together from Thanksgiving to New Year's. And the closer it got, the happier he was with his decision to find a fake girlfriend. He definitely didn't want to spend the season alone once again. He wasn't looking for anything real, but he could fake it a little while his family was together. Two days ago, a woman had applied to his ad on the website, and the note she'd sent spoke to him. She told him about her best friend stealing money from her, that she'd dreamed of opening a restaurant one day, and now that dream was in jeopardy. One of the things he'd hoped for was a woman who could cook while Bandit was away, and she'd given him the name of a chef in Houston to validate her skills. No number, nothing. Her reason was that she could have made up the number, and this way, he could have a little piece that she wasn't lying. It had been one of the things that let him know she'd read his profile. They'd agreed to meet in Lubbock at a small diner where they could talk face-to-face. That gave him time to do a background check on her and speak to her boss. He'd used the excuse that she'd applied to cater an event. A random stranger didn't need to know his business. Tucking a piece of hair behind her ear, Winifred shrugged. I guess we should find a table and talk. I guess so. For a second, he let himself wonder what it would be like to really have someone next to him during the holidays or longer. Just as quickly as his hopes lifted, they found the ground even faster. He wasn't meeting her with the intention of dating her, His heart wasn't yet mended from the last woman he'd dated. His family thought he should move on, but they didn't understand just how deep Angela's claws had dug into him. She'd upended Bear, and he'd yet to divulge to his family just how much. He was too embarrassed to confess what he'd done. Winnie was probably sweet, but his interests were strictly platonic. They were both getting something out of this deal, and his heart wasn't part of it. She'd get a nice sum of money, and he'd get a girlfriend with no strings attached and an expiration date. Chapter 4 Good gracious, Winifred Fordham was shocked she'd been able to wrangle her tongue into an actual greeting. Bear West may as well have walked off a cowboy monthly magazine shoot. He was tall and broad-shouldered, with thick, dark hair and deep blue eyes that would make a clear Texas sky jealous. In the picture he'd sent her, he'd sported a beard. Now he was clean-shaven, and when he smiled, there was a dimple. When he was sure she'd never seen a man so good-looking, Then she'd shaken his hand and nearly been blasted out of her tennis shoes. The jolt of electricity had carved a trail up her arm and down her spine. With a long sigh, Bear set his menu down and leaned forward with his arms on the table. Can we just talk a minute? 
It had been a strange thing to accidentally find Bear on the Mr. Matchmaker site. Never in her life had she expected to run across a man looking for a fake girlfriend. And never in a million years had she expected to be chosen. Sure, she said, laying her menu down as well. She'd done a background check on him before she'd agreed to meet him. Everything he'd posted in his biography was true. He grew up in Caprock Canyon, and a few years ago he'd purchased the ranch not far from the town. Based on how calloused his hands were, there was little doubt in her mind that he worked hard. They'd both agreed to leave some of the details for their meetup, mostly because they wanted to see how well they'd fit. They could know everything about the other, but with no chemistry, it wouldn't work. His family would have to believe they were dating. I feel all sorts of weird doing this. He sat back and raked his hand through his hair. Just all sorts of weird. She cast her gaze to the table. If it wasn't for losing the startup money her dad had given her, she wouldn't have even considered doing something like this. Bear didn't need to know that, though. Yeah, me too. But I made a deal with my dad. He gave me one year to pursue my dream of opening up my own restaurant. Lifting her gaze to his, she continued. If I don't, I'll have to hang up my apron and join him at his law firm. I guess that begs the question, can you cook? He asked. I can. I was all set to open my restaurant when my partner decided to take our money and run off with her boyfriend. Winnie's best friend in the whole world, Tammy Butters. It had cut Winnie in pieces when she found all the money missing and a note that wished her well. How was she going to be well when Tammy knew the deal Winnie had made with her father? Especially since she'd taken every penny that was left. Yeah, he said softly. Betrayal is a hard thing to get over. There was no doubt in Winnie's mind that he understood, based on his pained expression. Most people had an inkling of the hurt, but no one really knew how life-altering it was unless they'd been through it. Someone Winnie trusted with her life had taken her dreams and thrown her away. Yeah, but we don't have to let it win. I'm not going to quit until I have to. I'm a great chef. The conviction in her own voice caught her off guard a little, but she felt she needed to give it a little oomph. Otherwise, Bear might change his mind, and she needed that money. Bear grinned. I'll be honest, I checked you out before scheduling this. Chef Natalie Halstead said you were gifted. Then why did you ask me if I could cook? Shrugging, he said, mostly I wanted to know if you knew it. A smile deepened the dimple on his cheek. Natalie was a great teacher. I took culinary classes on the side while I went to law school. I was supposed to follow in my dad's footsteps and become a lawyer, but the idea made me miserable. I didn't want to do it. She had faith in me when I didn't. She'd been a sympathetic ear when Winnie called her about what Tammy did. Natalie had even offered to go in with her if Winnie wanted. Her teacher had looked into expanding into San Antonio. Winnie had appreciated the kindness, but she declined. Bear nodded. I understand that. It's all I've ever wanted to do, but I do have a question, one she hoped he'd answer. He held her gaze. Shoot. You're... Her cheeks warmed as she rethought her question. Um, what? He leaned forward with his arms on the table. You're just really good looking. Why do you need to hire a girlfriend? I would think you couldn't beat the girls off with a stick. Bear's shoulders shook as he laughed, and he hung his head. It was deep and rich, and she found herself wondering what it would be like to hear it all the time. His laughter died, and he sobered. Lifting his head, his eyes locked with hers. I... His voice faltered. Without thinking, she stretched her arm across the table and took his hand in hers. 
It's okay. It's been long enough. You'd think I could get over it. He pulled his hand away and sat back. Winnie shook her head. I don't know if I'll ever get over Tammy wiping out our bank account. We'd had this dream together for years. In a blink, it was just gone. She rubbed her eyes before the tears could start flowing. She decided to keep that information from her dad. Her mom knowing was bad enough. She didn't want to see the disappointment in his eyes. Let's fix that. If you're agreeable, we can sign the contract, and the first half of the money will be wired to your account, Bear replied. No, she wasn't agreeable. She was desperate. Going to work in her dad's law firm made her stomach cramp. She didn't like the idea of helping people divorce. She was the little girl with a scrapbook filled with dreams about her wedding day and the type of man she'd marry. It was storybook perfect and magical and something that was on the back burner until her restaurant was up and running. Nodding, she said, I am. I think we can make this work. He stuck his hand out. Then it's a deal? She shook his hand. It's a deal. Again, electricity hit her with a force that nearly made her bite her tongue. Sheesh, this man wasn't interested in her. And even if he was, she wasn't interested in him. She had a restaurant to open, a dream to fulfill. Nowhere in those plans did a man have any place. It was just a business arrangement. As soon as the holidays were over, she'd be $200,000 richer. All she wanted was the money. The man could stay at the ranch. Chapter 5 Winifred Fordham, you did what? Winnie's mom's voice was so shrill it could attract cats. Your father? No, I swore you to secrecy, Mom. You can't tell him. The only reason Winnie had called her mom was so she wouldn't send out the National Guard when she couldn't locate her. Bear had mentioned that sometimes the cell reception wasn't great in Caprock Canyon. Plus, as confident as she was that Bear was upstanding, having someone know her whereabouts seemed smart. Her mom sucked her teeth. Just because I'm not married to your father doesn't mean we aren't friends. He deserves to know what you're doing. The two of you just need to talk and actually listen to each other. Yeah, right. Didn't you divorce him because he was so pig-headed and stubborn? They'd been divorced as long as Winnie could remember, but she had to give it to her parents. They never made her feel like she had to choose between them. They were friends, most of the time. Winifred! This was the tone her mom used with her clients. It was funny, really. Both her parents were lawyers, both divorce attorneys, and equally well-known as pros. Patrick and Henrietta Fordham, for about a year, according to them, had been the dream team when it came to divorces. They'd lasted in total about four years, and a little before Winnie was two, they'd gone their separate ways. Her mom was now remarried, and her stepdad traveled a lot. He treated her mom well, and that's all that mattered to Winnie. Mom, Winnie said, using the same tone, just let me loan you the money. Dear, this isn't the way Fordham's work. Winnie shook her head. No, I don't want to do that. I need to show that I can do this on my own. Being a fake girlfriend was still doing things on her own. It wasn't like she wouldn't be working for the money. Her mom sighed, and Winnie could almost see her rubbing her temple. I can tell I'm not getting anywhere with you. Who is this man? What's his name? Can you send me a photograph? That way, if something happens, I'll at least have something to give to the police. Holding in a snicker, Winnie nodded. Yeah, Mom. Starting from the beginning, she told her mom everything. From how she found his biography to the eight-hour drive from San Antonio to Lubbock so they could meet. 
She wasn't so stupid as to think a background check was the end-all be-all if he was a serial killer. When she'd finished, she texted her mom the picture from the website. And you're leaving the Monday prior to Thanksgiving? Her mom repeated the information Winnie had given her. Yes, and I'll be staying through New Year's. Hold on, I just got your text. After a little shuffling of the phone, Winnie's mom came back. He looks like Grizzly Adams, or should I say Grizzly Bear? Her mom burst out laughing. Winnie chuckled. That's what she'd thought. He doesn't have a beard now. He said that picture was taken after he'd been herding cattle for a few days. He thought it would weed out women who wouldn't like being on a ranch. Well, he had that right. This is a terrible picture. Her mom paused, her humor fading. And you're sure he's not expecting? Mom, no. Winnie paused, recalling the hurt in his eyes and the soft way he spoke. Actually, he seems like a really nice man. I think he's been hurt, and that's why he's doing this. Her mom groaned. Oh, Winnie, you and stray animals. I swear, honey, you can't save every broken thing you find. Tammy should have taught you that. Winnie's chest tightened as the words hit her heart. I know that, she replied softly. I just need the money, and that's all. It's basically six weeks, and then I'll have the money to get things going. They'd found the perfect rental location in San Antonio for the restaurant, just a few days before Tammy ran off. As soon as Winnie realized what her friend had done, she'd contacted the landlord and told him. He'd offered to give her a little time to secure funding again. It was prime real estate, down in the heart of San Antonio, where there was tons of foot traffic. They'd lucked out when the previous restaurant had folded. It was a risk to open a new restaurant so soon after one failed, but she was banking on her ability to wow people with her food. I just don't want you to get hurt. You give your heart to people so easily and they take advantage of it. Just don't. She took a deep breath. Just don't get too involved. Let whatever problems he has be his. When Winnie didn't reply, her mom continued. You have a big, generous, trusting heart. It's one of your best qualities, but it's also your worst. It hurts me when you get hurt. I won't. All I need to do is pretend to be his girlfriend. And that was all she was doing. I'm not giving up on my dream, and a relationship would only be a distraction at this point. The line was quiet a few moments. I don't like this, but I'll treat it like drinking. I'm a phone call away, Winnie. If something happens, I'll drop what I'm doing, no matter what time it is or where you are, and come get you. I'd rather you be a horrible lawyer than a dead chef. Smiling, Winnie nodded. Her mom may not agree with her, but if it came to needing rescue, Winnie could count on her. Thanks, Mom. I love you to pieces, little girl. And before you say anything, you'll always be my little girl. So just deal. Her mom ended the sentence by blowing her a raspberry. This was why Winnie called her mom. They could disagree, argue, whatever. And in the end, they were still friends. Her dad, on the other hand, while she loved him, was a hard person to please. The driving force behind her determination to succeed was so he'd finally recognize that she could manage her own life without his interference. If she failed, he'd never let her live it down. Now all she needed to do was keep her end of the bargain keep Bear's family from suspecting they were faking it. If she managed that, she'd have the money, her restaurant, and, hopefully, her dad's respect. If she could just get that, her life would be perfect. Chapter 6 
It was a little after lunch as Bear searched the crowd pouring out of the exit door from the lobby of the Amarillo airport. The number of people didn't surprise him since it was the Monday before Thanksgiving. Instead of coming into Lubbock, Winnie had chosen something closer, since she was flying back from Houston after visiting her parents. She's got dark red hair, Bear said, just loud enough for Carrie Ann to hear him. She's almost my height, too. He'd thought of that often since their meeting in Lubbock. If he kissed her, he wouldn't have to touch his toes to do it. I'm so excited to meet her, his sister replied, patting him on the shoulder. She sounds amazing and so sweet for offering to cook for us since Bandit's out of town. Since his meeting with Winnie in Lubbock, Bear had dropped hints that he was seeing someone and that she would be staying at the ranch during the holidays. What he hadn't anticipated was Carrie Ann riding with him to pick Winnie up. He should have, but he'd underestimated his sister's excitement. It was already nerve-wracking to see Winnie again, but now he'd have an audience. He hoped Winnie had checked her text messages. Otherwise, she was going to be blindsided, and he didn't want that. Just then, he spotted Winnie with a backpack hanging on one shoulder, and he had the craziest sensation. An odd peace settled over him as her gaze met his. A gut feeling told him he'd met the woman he was supposed to marry. Inwardly, he scoffed at himself. Marry her? Not a chance. He'd just met her. Sure, they'd been talking a little since their meeting in Lubbock, chatting online at night or on the phone, learning about each other so the relationship would come across as authentic. A couple of times, the conversation had drifted to deeper topics, but he'd steer it back to the surface. It had been tempting to confess his deepest thoughts, but after Angela, he'd learned that they'd just be used against him. There was no way he was letting his feelings get out of control this time. Those foolish notions had died with his ex. Not that he wouldn't one day find someone, but he wouldn't be using a matchmaker site to do it, and it wouldn't be the first woman he met. Plus, Winnie lived in San Antonio. Distance was the biggest killer of relationships. Oh, she's so pretty, Bear. Carrie Ann beamed at him. I love her hair. Yeah, me too, he replied. It was just as beautiful this time. Well, all of her was beautiful. Her choice of clothing was consistent. Jeans, a t-shirt, and tennis shoes. Simple, down-to-earth, and completely opposite Angela, which was definitely a plus. A smile lifted Winnie's lips as she stopped in front of him, and he gathered her into a hug. Winnie? This is my sister, Carrie Ann. Of course his sister hugged her. It's so good to meet you. Bear has hardly told us anything. Men, Winnie laughed. It's nice to meet you too. Carrie Ann released her. Thank you so much for volunteering to cook for us. I can't tell you how wonderful that is. Our sister-in-law will probably want to help. Just a heads up. Shrugging, Winnie smiled. I never turned down help. How was your flight? asked Bear. It was okay. They ran out of pretzels. Carrie Ann's mouth dropped open. What? I didn't even know that was possible. Winnie chuckled. I didn't either, but I think I'm bad luck. No, Bear said, putting his arm around her shoulders and pressing his lips to her temple. I don't think that's possible. The pop of static from the touch made his mouth tingle. He'd need to keep his lips to himself if that was going to keep happening. Winnie hugged him around the chest. Yeah, she'd gotten his message. You're sweet, but now I'm craving pretzels. Then we'll stop and get you some. He planted a kiss on the top of her head like it was the most natural thing to do. That unnerving feeling that he'd met the one rammed him in the ribs. His head responded with, San Antonio, 
using a megaphone. Carrie Ann grinned. You two make a great couple. Mama is going to love her. Mom loves everyone. That's true. Carrie Ann directed the statement to Winnie. I sure wish Bandit was here to meet you. I bet you, Reagan, and Bandit could talk cooking all day long. As they reached the luggage area, Winnie dropped her arms to her sides. I'm sure Reagan and I will talk about food a lot. She paused. You'll be able to spot mine pretty easy. Bear laughed. The one with the cheeseburgers printed on it. And the one with fries and drinks. The smallest has desserts on it. Oh, I spotted one, Carrie Ann said, running to the end and grabbing a large suitcase. She pulled it behind her and returned to the group as Bear spied a small one on its way to them. He grabbed the handle and set it on the floor. Did you bring your knife set? Yeah, it should be in the middle-sized piece. I had a feeling they'd give me a trip to jail if I tried to bring them in my carry-on. As people took their luggage, Bear could see the anxiety building in Winnie. Her knives were important to her. Every chef had their preference, and from what she'd told him, she'd worked hard to afford them. Tears glistened in her eyes as the last piece of luggage was pulled off, and hers still hadn't appeared. My knives, she whispered. The hurt in her voice tugged at his heart. Putting his arm around her, he pulled her to him. It's okay, sweetheart. We'll find them, and if not, we'll get you some more, okay? Those tear-filled green eyes locked with his. I worked so hard for them. I know you did. Let's go talk to the airline and let them know. Carrie Ann rubbed her back. I'm so sorry. Let's do what Bear said and go to the lost luggage desk. I'm sure they just got on the wrong plane. Winnie nodded. I bet you're right. I'm just attached to them, I guess. Come on, Bear said, keeping one arm around her and taking the handle of her luggage with the other. We'll get this taken care of and then head to the ranch. Okay. Winnie leaned into him as if soaking up his comfort. He had to admit it felt good to be needed by someone who didn't see him as a dollar sign. As soon as he thought it, doubts flooded his mind. He'd thought the same about Angela, and look where that got him. Heartbreak City. Then again, wouldn't Winnie have tried to negotiate more money right from the beginning if she knew he was a billionaire? Although, if she was really trying to pad her bank account, maybe she wanted to gain his trust. Man, he needed to stop. If this kind of argument was going to take place the entire holiday, he'd have a never-ending migraine. Winnie was a chef, and he knew that. It was a fact. He'd done a background check on her, talked to her teacher, and done everything in his power to keep himself safe. If she was anything like Angela, she'd have pointed those big green eyes at him and asked him to replace the knives. So far, this woman was nothing like the last one, and he'd need to keep that in mind. So he didn't treat her like she was. He'd been wronged, but it was his face he'd be looking at in the mirror each morning, and no matter how someone had treated him, he was still responsible for his own behavior. He could be kind to Winnie without forgetting this was a business arrangement. When he'd done his research on her, he'd read several articles about chefs. There were some chefs who couldn't function in the kitchen without their knives. His family knew him well enough to know that if he loved a woman— he'd get her a replacement. They were helping each other. That's all. Chapter 7 The display of knives on the wall in front of Winnie was impressive for a store in a town as small as Amarillo. Okay, so it wasn't the boonies, but it wasn't San Antonio or Houston either. When Bear had insisted they stop, she was sure they weren't going to find anything she could use. It was super sweet, and he'd done a number on her nerves at the airport, kissing the side of her temple. And the way he pulled her close when she realized her knives were missing, not to mention part of her wardrobe, 
If he kept being so sweet, planting kisses on her like that, she'd have enough hot flashes for early menopause. See any that will work? Carrie Ann asked. His sister was the sweetest thing, too. She'd practically squeezed Winnie to pieces when they'd hugged in the airport. If that girl wasn't homecoming queen in high school, Winnie would eat day-old gas station sushi. I do, but the reason I was so attached to mine was the price. They were so expensive. I worked two jobs to buy them while I was in college. Bear shot her a glance. You pick the ones you need, and don't worry about the price tag. Don't worry about the price tag? He was a rancher, and she knew his profit margin was slim at best. Most ranches were like that. Not that they couldn't make money, but running a place like that wasn't easy or for the faint of heart. I just, I know you raise cattle, and I toured a ranch with Natalie once. We were thinking of switching beef suppliers, but she wanted to make sure they were grass-fed. Needless to say, they weren't, which was why they were so much cheaper. In the end, we opted to stick with what we knew. My point is, I know making money with a ranch can be tough, and it's a lot of hard work. I can't use your money for knives. A half-smile lifted his lips, and he trained those ocean blues on her. I appreciate that, but really, it's okay. All right, but I'll make a deal with you. If you buy the knives, I'll help you with the ranch. That way I'll have a better understanding of how things work. That was the least she could do if he was going to spend money like that on her. She stuck her hand out, waiting for him to shake on it. His gaze dipped to her hand. You're cooking. That's work. Shaking her head, she said, No, that's fun. The half-smile turned into a wide grin as he took her hand. It's a deal. There was that tingle again, zipping all over, frying her nerves. Okay. You sure haven't changed much, Bear, Carrie Ann quipped as she snickered. He's always done things on a handshake. For him, it's as good as signing on a dotted line. He'll kill himself trying to keep his word. Oh, yeah? Winnie smiled. Nodding, Carrie Ann said, Oh, yeah. With a shrug, Bear pointed his gaze at the wall of knives. I think a man's word should mean something. There are too many people in this world who don't understand that anymore. Was it proper to swoon in a cutlery store? Because if he kept that kind of talk up, she'd hit the floor and never see it coming. She'd always loved men who were like that the kind who would cross oceans if it meant keeping promises. I think so too, she murmured. Bear slowly looked at her, and their eyes locked. And just like that, she was alone with the most beautiful man she'd ever seen. She was absolutely positive her heart was beating out a Morse code. Something to the effect of, kiss me, you handsome devil. A tiny giggle from his sister broke the moment but as brief as it was, it was seared into Winnie's mind. She had a restaurant to open, but now she had a standard that a man would have to meet if they wanted to sweep her off her feet. You two are just... Carrie Ann sighed. Cute. The moment was definitely broken when Bear shot his sister a withering look. I'm not cute. Are too, she quipped back. Stop that. You're making Winnie uncomfortable. Bear curled his arm around Winnie's waist. This is her first time meeting the family. Do you want to scare her off? Without a thought or bit of hesitation, she leaned into him, placing her hand against his chest. I don't scare easily. What was even stranger was how right it felt, too. Like he'd been made for her. She squeezed her eyes closed and took a breath to get her thoughts in order. Why was she even thinking about these things? They were supposed to be acting like they were a real couple, but they weren't. All the sweet things, little kisses, the way he held her, that was all to convince his sister they were a real couple. Why was that so easy to forget? Getting caught up in something with Bear would only muddy the waters. 
he was acting. And despite her heart trying to convince her otherwise, she was acting too. Boy, in the next six weeks, she'd need to be careful and remember why she was in Caprock Canyon. Perhaps she should see if the store had super glue so she could keep her feet firmly planted on the ground. She had a feeling she was going to need it. Chapter 8 How big is the ranch? asked Winnie. They turned off the road at least a mile ago, and they were still going. He shot her a smile. Over 900 acres. She sucked in a breath. Wow, it's huge. The one I visited was only 500 or so. That's why I hired a few ranch hands. I'm needing more help now that the herd is larger. He pointed in the direction of the passenger window. We're thinking of taking some of the land and building some lodging so we can start a dude ranch. Chuckling, he added, since we already have the ranch part. Winnie nodded as she turned her gaze to the field stretching into the horizon. Really? Thinking about it, we're out of the way, so as far as peace and quiet, we'd have that down. Carrie Ann tapped Winnie on the shoulder from the back seat. My brother Wyatt and his wife Gabby have a farmer's market once a month. It's become pretty popular over the last couple of years. That's because Gabby makes the most delicious pecan pies you've ever eaten, Bear said, turning off the road. In the distance, Winnie could see a two-story ranch home. She touched his shoulder. The house is beautiful, Bear. I did say I had it restored, and I sent you a picture. Another instance of a picture not doing something justice. It's so impressive seeing it in person. I love the wraparound porch, the rocking chairs, and, well, the whole thing. Bear covered her hand with his. I'm glad you like it. I love it. It looks like my nanny's house in Houston. She sold it a few years ago when she moved to Oregon. I always wanted a house like that because of all the good memories I have. A smile stretched on his lips. I remember you telling me that. I had a rocking chair made for you so you can sit outside in the evening with your tea. Winnie's eyes turned misty. You did that for me? Even knowing this was a fake relationship, her heart still skipped a beat. He remembered she liked sitting outside drinking tea on an evening. You're so sweet. I wanted you to feel comfortable while you're here. He continued along a bricked path to the back of the house and stopped the truck under a carport that matched the house. This little deck back here has the best views, I think. The sun sets on this side, so I put your chair back here with mine. Thank you. She touched the spot over her heart and caught his gaze. That's one of the nicest things anyone has ever done for me. In the next second, she heard the rear passenger door open and close as Carrie Ann slipped out, but she didn't acknowledge it even a little. They weren't even dating, and he was treating her better than she'd ever been treated. This is home until the new year, and I wanted you to know that what's mine is yours while you're here. His voice was soft. I hope you like it here. I already do. She paused, bracing her hand on the armrest and leaning over. You've told me a little about Angela, and I want you to know that if I ever see her, I'm going to punch her lights out. His rich laughter filled the cab of the pickup. I hope you meet her then, but you don't need to sock her. Someone recently told me I was too good for her. Winnie snickered, remembering the conversation they'd shared. He was too good for Angela. Way too good. I think you must have been talking to a pretty wise person. I think so, too. He cupped her cheek as their gazes locked. Once again, the world turned hazy. With each moment that passed, the hope that he'd kiss her grew. Dropping his hand, he cleared his throat and leaned away. We probably should go inside. I suspect by now Carrie Ann has given the signal that we're here. Okay. For a fleeting moment, she was hurt that he didn't kiss her. Then reality slapped her upside the head. The last thing she needed was him kissing her. 
That could lead to more kissing, and she had a feeling that the more he kissed her, the less determined she'd be to leave after the new year. Opening the driver door, he jumped out and rounded the front of the pickup, pulling her door open before taking her luggage out of the back seat. I'm sure my mom is beyond ready to meet you. Do you think she'll like me? Why had she asked that? Did it matter if they liked her? Besides, it seemed that Carrie Ann did. Wouldn't that mean the rest of the family would? I think she'll hug you so tight you'll be wondering if you have organ damage. Winnie laughed. That makes me feel better. Not the organ damage, the hug. Holding her luggage in each hand, he waved her ahead of him. This is the back door, and I apologize for making it seem like I'm sneaking you in. You had to park the truck under the cover. I bet you get a heap of hailstorms. He set her luggage down as he opened the door to the house. We do, and I forgot to put it away once. I don't want that to happen again. She stepped inside the house and immediately took a deep breath. Coffee. It smells glorious. Hunter and Reagan must already be here. I didn't think they were coming until Thursday, just before the meal. Maybe they couldn't wait to see you guys. Earlier in the year, they'd spoken of getting a manager for their bed and breakfast. They were interviewing people and struggling to find someone they trusted. But I guess they ultimately found someone. Nodding, Winnie said, I understand that. I'll have to do a lot of hiring for my restaurant. I'm glad they found someone. Grabbing her luggage, Bear stepped inside and shut the door before moving around her. I figured when you got here, you could pick a room upstairs. He tipped his head to the left. My room is down that hall. I had it added about three years ago now. I love my family when they come for the holidays, but I need my space. He chuckled. He dipped his head forward. That's the kitchen right through that door. I suspect the murmuring I'm hearing is my family gathering to meet you. Okay. He followed her into the kitchen, and sure enough, there were several people seeming to act like they were playing cards. They looked up, smiled, and three of the men sitting at the table stood. One of the men held a little girl with dark hair. Carrie Ann approached him and took her. This is my husband, Israel, and this little one is Camry. Hello, said an older woman, who was most definitely Bear's mom. She stood and rounded the table, gathering Winnie into a hug. It's so good to meet you. Just like Bear warned, his mom hugged Winnie tight. It's nice to meet you, too. His mom held her out. Oh, that red hair, Bear told us, but I don't think he could have accurately described it. It's so beautiful. Winnie tucked a strand behind her ear. Thank you. I'm King West, said Bear's dad. It's good to meet you. After that, it was a flurry of introductions and names that Winnie hoped she could remember. Hunter was a younger version of Bear, with hair just a little lighter. And their dad couldn't deny parentage if he tried. The family genes ran strong. The rest of the family will show up over the next couple of days. Bear held up Winnie's luggage. I'm going to take Winnie to her room. We'll be back down after we get her settled. This time, Winnie followed Bear as he led her through the house and up the stairs. The more she saw of the house, the more she loved it. It was so warm and homey and inviting. It only made it feel more like she was in her nanny's house. When they reached the second floor landing, Bear turned to her. You get your pick. Each one has its own bathroom, so you don't have to worry about that. How about the middle on the left? He shot her a smile. Lead the way. As they reached the room she'd be using, she marveled at how nice it was. This is better than my apartment. When I remodeled the home, I knew we'd be having family holidays together. The past few years, everyone has stayed from Thanksgiving to New Year's. I suppose it's tradition now, and I love it. Most of the year, I don't use the rooms, but it's nice to have them available. Sometimes, my mom and dad like to stay here. In the last couple of months, Carrie Ann and Israel have lived here while they work on their home in town. She turned to face him. 
That's kind of you. With a shrug, he said, It's what you do for family. He passed by her, setting her luggage on the bed. I'll get out of your hair so you can put your things away, or whatever else you might need to do. I can start working on dinner if you'd like. He shook his head. Not tonight. I didn't want to say anything while Carrie Ann was around, but my family thought we'd want to have dinner alone together, since it's been a while since we've seen each other. Dinner alone with Bear. Her pulse jumped. It was dangerous. She liked him a lot. Did you really want to drive back to town after coming all this way? If you don't mind, I put together a picnic. I thought we'd take one of the four-wheelers and drive west a little and eat as the sun sets. Uh, it was slight, but she saw the little downturn of his lips at her reply. I can tell them you're tired after traveling. It's okay. What was life without a little danger? She touched his arm. Actually, I think that sounds incredible. Are you sure? I don't want you to think you have to do anything you don't want. He stuffed his hands in his jeans pockets. They'll understand. No, I do want to go, really. I bet a sunset here is gorgeous. The smile he gave her went to his eyes and made her stomach flutter. All right, I'll get things together while you settle in, and I'll come get you in a little bit. You're free to go anywhere you want, okay? Okay. He crossed the room to the door, pausing at the doorframe. I'm glad you're here. See you in a bit. With the click of the door, she sagged. Holy smokes, she was in trouble. Bear was checking boxes she didn't know she had, and now they were going to have a romantic picnic while watching the sunset. Oh, what was she doing? He said his family thought they'd want time alone together. Not him. The only reason he was doing it was to keep his family from being suspicious. This wasn't a real date. Besides, she had a restaurant she needed to open. In San Antonio. She couldn't afford a distraction like Bear. Her head had things straight, but her heart was all sorts of twisted up. Did a man like Bear come along more than once? Maybe not, but her dream was within her grasp, and she wasn't giving up on it. She'd just have to keep her wits when she was alone with him later. Easy peasy. No big deal. The little voice in the back of her mind laughed. Trouble. That man was going to be buckets and buckets of trouble. Chapter 9 Bear tapped his knuckles against Winnie's bedroom door. After dropping her off earlier, he'd worked on their picnic. He'd taken the four-wheeler, scouted out a spot, and returned to the house to fix their basket. He'd packed plenty of warm blankets in case she got cold, and a thermos of hot chocolate. It probably wasn't as good as she could make it, but he hoped she'd like it. He'd also packed hot water in case she wanted tea instead. The door swung open and a smile greeted him. Boy, howdy, was she something in a white sweater that hugged her curves and made her hair and eyes stand out even more. Wow, you are beautiful. Oh, Bear, stop it. She looked down as she fussed with her sweater. All I did was change into something a little warmer. He took her chin in his fingers and tilted her head up. Any man worth a second of your time will acknowledge your beauty every time he sees you. Don't ever forget that. Her lips parted as she stared at him wide-eyed. Most of the men I know don't talk like you. It's a pity they can't see what's right in front of them. Again, just like in the truck, the temptation to kiss her hit him square in the stomach, knocking the wind from him. Her perfect lips looked soft, and he pictured long hours spent memorizing them. His galloping heart was hard to ignore, but he couldn't trust himself. He dropped his hand and stepped back. You ready to watch the sunset? I really am. She laced her fingers in his and stepped out of her room, using her free hand to shut the door. He knew she was only doing it because they were supposed to be a real couple, but it didn't lessen how much he enjoyed it. On the first floor landing, they met his mom, Carolyn. 
The way her face lit up now that she thought he was seeing someone made him feel guilty about lying. At the time, he'd figured it'd be no big deal. It had been a while since Angela, and he was simply testing the waters this time. They'd think it was natural when the relationship fizzled out. You packed plenty of blankets, right? His mom directed the question to him. Yes, ma'am. I won't let her freeze. She patted his cheek and then smiled at Winnie. I'm so glad you came for the holidays. Thank you for inviting me. I really love it. Winnie looked from his mom to Bear. I didn't realize when he invited me just how wonderful it would be. We'll see you in a little while, Mom, he said. They continued through the house and on to the back porch, where the four-wheeler sat not far from the steps. Taking a deep breath, he surveyed the open field in front of him. How had he ever lived anywhere else? I love this time of year. Taking a deep breath is like spring cleaning for your lungs, Winnie said, inhaling deeply. Bear brought his attention to her and studied her as she stood there with her eyes closed. The white turtleneck sweater she wore under her coat made her hair an even deeper red and her skin that much more porcelain. He could picture sitting on the deck, her in his lap, and living out his years with her next to him. In the next breath, reality knocked. She lived in San Antonio, and she had a dream of opening a restaurant. That needed to be his mantra any time he got any foolish notions about her. This wasn't real, and it would never have a chance to be real. He loved his ranch, and she wanted her restaurant. Two things too far apart to ever be able to bridge. I feel the same way, Bear replied. She opened her eyes and locked gazes with him. We have a lot in common. It sure seemed that way, but Angela had pretended to have things in common with him. She'd played him so well. How could he trust himself not to make the same mistake? I'm ready for a picnic, are you? Nodding, she said. Yeah, very much so. Once they were seated on the four-wheeler, he took off for the spot he'd found about a mile northwest. The entire ride, he'd glance back and find her smiling. If she was faking it, she sure was good at it. When they reached the area, he parked the four-wheeler and walked to the back, pulling off one of the blankets he'd packed on the back seat. With Winnie's help, he spread it out and then grabbed the basket and the rest of the blankets. He turned and caught her looking off into the distance with her hands on her hips. She faced him with a wide smile that reached her eyes, making them seem even greener. This is beautiful. I love it. So open and I don't even have words. She took a deep breath, spread her arms out and turned in circles. This is what Julie Andrews must have felt like when she was singing about the hills being alive with the sound of music. Now that she said it, Bear had to agree. While it was vast and open, animals could be heard while a breeze rustled nearby mesquite trees. Maybe she did. Winnie stumbled, and Bear dropped everything, catching her just before she hit the ground. Whoa, you all right? She blinked as she looked up at him. My boots aren't meant for twirling, apparently. He chuckled. That's all right. I didn't mind catching you. The words had slid off his tongue without a second thought. They were true, though. He liked how she felt in his arms. Thank you, she said and gasped. Oh, I made you drop the basket. She pulled away and walked to the partially spilled contents. I shouldn't have done my Sound of Music impression. It's just a basket. He closed the little bit of distance and squatted next to her. Doesn't look like anything spilled. Picking up a labeled container, she gasped. Cinnamon hazelnut scones? Bear nodded. Didn't you say you like those? I love them, but I didn't think you'd remember that. She hugged the container to her chest. I absolutely love them. Whew, he said with a smile. For a minute there, I thought I'd remembered wrong. 
Shaking her head, she cast her gaze to the ground. No, no, you didn't. Her voice was so soft that if he hadn't been right next to her, he'd have missed it. Thank you. You're welcome. For the first time in a while, he actually trusted his gut. She wasn't faking this. Winnie was genuinely grateful he'd listened to her. It made him wish he hadn't been so quick to shut down topics that had delved a little deeper when they'd talked. At the same time, the idea that he could be used and thrown away made him sick to his stomach. He couldn't handle that again. It had been a few years, and he could still feel the deep ache that Angela left in her wake. As nice as it was to have things in common with Winnie, it didn't mean he could let his guard down. There was still the possibility that she knew about his wealth, and she was just good at hiding it. He needed to stick to the plan, the one that meant putting her on a plane back to San Antonio, the one that kept him safe. Maybe by next year, he'd be ready to give real dating another shot. Chapter 10 once the contents of the basket were picked up, Winnie and Bear got comfortable on the blanket he'd spread out. When he'd said he planned a picnic, she hadn't expected a drive on a four-wheeler, the beautiful setting, or the contentment she felt. Even more, she never expected him to remember a random comment in a conversation from weeks ago. But he had. He'd thought enough of her to get cinnamon scones. This was fake dating. What exactly would it be like to actually date Bear West? How would any man ever measure up to this standard from this point on? Pulling open the container, she broke a piece of a scone off and popped it in her mouth. It was buttery, soft, and had just the right amount of sweetness. These are so good. My sister-in-law made them for me, he smiled. Wait until you have one of her pecan pies. You'll never eat anyone else's. I still can't get over that you remembered. Shrugging, he pulled out a sandwich and unwrapped it. My family knows me. They know what I'd do if I were dating you. We're dating. Her heart hit the dirt. Inwardly, she groaned. There was no reason to get upset. They weren't dating. I think we need to revisit the reason you needed to hire a girlfriend. A small chuckle poured from him. Oh, I live in the middle of nowhere. I'm simple, laid back, and I'm not a woman's idea of fun. Stupid women, she mumbled to herself. What? With a cough, she covered the comment. Oh, nothing. Just a bit of scone went down the wrong way. She smiled and took a bigger bite this time. Oh. Well, here, he said, setting his sandwich down and pulling out two thermoses. One has hot chocolate, and the other has hot water if you'd like some tea. You named a few that you liked, and I brought them. If she wasn't sitting down, her butt would have a bruise from falling on it. He'd even remembered what teas she liked. She uncrossed her legs and lifted up on her knees, looking in the basket. White winter tea... Jasmine Select, Raspberry Darjeeling, and Lemon Mint Reserve. All teas she loved but hadn't purchased in a year because she was saving every penny and putting it into the restaurant. Winnie was beside herself. She shoved the basket from between them and threw her arms around his neck. I don't know how to thank you. Bear wrapped his arms around her. It's just tea tea I haven't been able to buy. She sniffed and leaned back. Bear, this is the kindest thing anyone has ever done for me. He ran his thumb under her eye, wiping away a tear. You're welcome. He tilted his head. Just what kind of men have you dated that tea is the nicest thing anyone has ever done for you? She cast her gaze down to his chest, playing with the button on his coat. I really haven't dated much. Between law school, taking culinary courses, and working, I didn't have time. I haven't either. A little in high school, some while I was working for the cotton gin, and then... The sentence trailed off, and it was as if he was fighting with himself for the rest of it. I just didn't date a whole lot. 
As she lifted her gaze to his, their eyes locked, and the desire to kiss him grew to the point that it hurt not to act on it. If she had her wedding scrapbook, she'd take his picture and paste it in the groom's spot. He was as close to perfect as she could get. He was also not in her current plans. If she didn't open her restaurant, her dad would never let her live it down. She'd spent years listening to him tell her she'd never be able to do it. Every time she'd tried to make him understand, he'd talk over her. Her dad was deaf to her dreams because he believed she was meant to be a lawyer and follow in his footsteps. The only way to prove him wrong was to succeed. That was her dream, wasn't it? To be a chef? To own her own restaurant? Would she be holding on as tightly if she wasn't determined to make her dad eat his words? I just thank you so much for thinking of me. Slowly, she pulled away before her reasons took a hike and her lips did something she'd be unable to take back. Sure. He picked his sandwich up and began eating again, sounding almost as disappointed as she felt for not kissing him. It was better this way. Getting hurt would be inevitable if she got attached. Her home, her life, her plans were in San Antonio, not in the middle of the West Texas Plains. Who would eat her food here? Plus, she didn't want to hurt him either. He'd been kind to her. She'd hate to make him think there was a chance when there wasn't. If he even thought that. What was she even thinking? He was the one who wanted a fake girlfriend. If he'd wanted a real one, he wouldn't be paying Winnie. Once the sun set, they packed up their picnic and headed back to the house. She'd thought he'd just go to his room, but he was a gentleman all the way to his core. After talking to his family a moment, he walked her to her bedroom door. His family had been kind enough to invite her to join their card game, but she was exhausted. Standing just inside the room, she turned to him and smiled. Thank you for the date the cinnamon scones, and the tea. I had a wonderful time. Without thinking, she touched her lips to his cheek and froze. He'd kissed her temple and her head. Weren't cheeks fair game? Just when she thought he'd pull away, he wrapped an arm around her waist, drew her closer, and pressed his lips to hers, holding them there for a moment. When his lips began to move against hers, she was certain her bones were melting. This light touch was the gentlest kiss she'd ever shared with a man. No rush, no hurry, just him and her. It was fireworks and grenades and every other flamey thing she could think of. If she was holding a sparkler, this would be the point when she threw it down because it was burning her fingers. Circling her arms around his neck, whatever space there was between them, she erased it. Time spent working on the ranch made his body a solid wall of muscle, and she loved the way he felt against her. Just as he deepened the kiss, footsteps on the stairs shattered the moment, and he pulled away. It was the worst timing ever. Or maybe the best. One more minute and she was positive her hair would have caught on fire. That was a kiss that future kisses would be measured against. It was a kiss that girls wrote about in their diary, and it had been way too brief. A woman stopped on the landing and smiled. Oh, you must be Winnie, she said, approaching with her hand out. I'm Stephanie Fredericks. Bear had told Winnie about their family friends, the Fredericks, and how they spent their holidays with the Wests. This had to be Gabby's sister. Winnie shook her hand, but her mind was a whirl from the kiss. Uh, nice to meet you. Stephanie looked from Winnie to Bear. I'll just find my room. She giggled and walked down the hall, disappearing behind a door with her suitcase. When Winnie returned her gaze to Bear's, his eyes were darker than normal. If there was ever a storm in someone's eyes, it was in his. Should she apologize for tempting him by kissing him on the cheek? 
because she didn't feel sorry at all. The more rational part of her brain said she should be, but her lips were singing a different song entirely. He rubbed the back of his neck. Well, I guess I don't have to worry about my family believing we're dating. Right, fake dating. That's the plan. She wiped her hands down her pants and stepped farther into her room. I guess I'll call it a night. Thank you again for the date. I'll see you tomorrow, he smiled. She didn't watch him leave before shutting the door, leaning her back against it and groaning. If there was anyone listening up there, she needed them to rescue her. She'd liked him from the moment she met him. Their talks had only intensified it, and now the kiss to end all kisses was throwing her body into chaos. What should she do? She crossed the room to the bed, flopped down, and rolled onto her side. It wasn't fair that she'd met Bear now. Why couldn't it have been after her restaurant was open? Or why couldn't he live in San Antonio? Then again, he'd most likely kissed her because he'd heard Stephanie before Winnie did. She'd just have to keep in mind the fact that their relationship was fake if there was a next time. Again, she silently asked for help. She needed to make it to the first of the year. Oh, she was in so, so much trouble. Chapter 11 It was Thanksgiving, and Bear had deliberately kept himself from being alone with Winnie since kissing her. It was the most cowardly thing he'd ever done. He should have faced her, told her he liked kissing her, and that it couldn't happen again. They had separate lives. He respected her dreams and wouldn't do anything to stand in the way of them. As he reached his bedroom door to go out and take care of his chores, he rubbed his face with his hands. Getting up at four in the morning was wearing on him. She'd offered to help him with the animals, but in his cowardice, he'd woken earlier than normal the last couple of days. By the time he returned to the house, everyone was up, and there was no chance his lips would stray. With a deep breath and as much determination as he could muster without a bucket of coffee, he opened the door and stopped in his tracks. Someone was brewing coffee. Reagan never woke up this early to make coffee. You look like a man who could use a cup of coffee, Winnie said as she stepped into view. I don't know if it's as good as Reagan's, but I tried. She smiled. What could he do? Uh. She closed the distance between them. Since my luggage is still missing, that deal I made to pay you back for my knives is still in force. I even shook on it. You're keeping me from honoring my word. And from what I've been told, it's a rare thing for people to mean what they say. He'd felt bad before, and now he felt lower than dirt. I'm sorry. Closing the remaining gap, she circled her arms around his chest. You're a good man. She leaned back, took his chin in her fingers, and held it while their eyes locked. I don't know everything Angela did. What I do know is that she lost out. Bear wrapped his arms around her and breathed her in. Their kiss had blown his boots off. He could have kissed her until his last breath, and it wouldn't have been long enough. This relationship couldn't go anywhere, and it was ever present in his mind. You scared me. I figured as much when you avoided spending time alone with me since you kissed me. She dropped her fingers from his face and stepped back. We both heard those footsteps on the stairs. I knew the kiss didn't mean anything, and I'm okay. We're good. He hadn't heard a dadgum thing when he kissed her except the pounding of his own heart. His lips had gone rogue, and the next thing he knew he was holding her, kissing her, and wishing it would never stop. Knowing that Stephanie's presence was why Winnie had kissed him back hurt a little, but it was a good thing. The little he was already attached would only get worse if she returned his affection. Right. I won't do that again. Next time I'll talk to you. She grinned. I'm a grand listener. 
My dad talked over me my whole life, so I know what it's like to have no one hear me. So that's why she was surprised he'd remembered little things about her. She was used to being ignored. How could anyone do that to her? How could he have done it the past few days? I will never do that again. I see you, Winifred Fordham. I hear you, too. I'll do my best to make sure you never feel that way with me. Her eyes grew misty. That's as good as written in stone coming from you. You want to grab some coffee and then go out with me? It shouldn't take too long this morning. We're just taking care of the horses. The ranch hands will take care of the herd. They're working on Thanksgiving? We work all year round. Animals don't much care about holidays. He laughed. Winnie nodded. I guess I'd never thought about it, but you're right. I suspect they wouldn't. So, coffee, and then the horses? Sure, she replied. Then I can get cleaned up and work on Thanksgiving dinner. Just as she turned, he caught her and pulled her back. You really don't have to work for your knives. It was a pleasure to buy them for you. He meant it. It was just money. Then again, he was still torn up with how Angela used him. Perhaps he could apply the same philosophy to Angela and move on. With a shrug and a smile, she tangled her fingers in his. The things that mean the most are the things you work for. Yeah, yeah, they were. All right. After a short pit stop to down some coffee, and it rivaled Reagan's brewing skills, they headed to the barn. Once there, he held the door as she entered and shut it behind them. Every winter, he was more and more thankful they'd spent the money to have the barn heated. Oh, this is nice, Winnie turned to face him. No wonder I didn't need much more than a coat. It's toasty in here. We wanted the horses taken care of. They work just as hard as we do. Do you take care of the horses by yourself every day? She asked. It was a good question and something he'd thought about often. Shrugging, he nodded. Mostly. Sometimes I wish I had a dog to keep me company, but I don't have the time to even find one. I can see a dog being a good friend. She took a deep breath, rubbed her hands together, and said, All right, put me to work. What's first? A woman had never been as attractive to him as when he was at that moment. She was willing to get her hands dirty. When she'd offered, he figured it would more be her keeping him company as he worked. But it was clear that Winnie was in the barn to help. Had Angela ever done that? That was a big, fat, resounding no. It should have been a huge red flag when the woman cried about her nail-breaking. Why hadn't he realized that before getting so serious? Before making a stupid choice? He smiled. Follow me. By the time they reached the last horse, Bear could tell Winnie had listened to him. She took charge and did exactly as he'd shown her, checking their hooves, underneath their blankets, making sure they hadn't somehow hurt themselves. She was good with them, too. Once she was finished, she led the gelding out to the pasture. Now was the real test, mucking the stalls. She turned to him with a wide grin on her face. Is that all? Not quite. We need to clean out their stalls. He walked to the room where his wheelbarrow and pitchfork were stored. If she helped with this one, he'd be floored. This is the real dirty part. Her smile never faltered. Okay. His pulse tripled its speed. Winnie didn't mind a little dirt or hard work. If he didn't respect her before, which he did, he would now. You really don't mind mucking stalls, do you? I said I'd help, unless you're just messing with me. No, their stalls need to be cleaned out after they've spent the night in them. He pushed the wheelbarrow to the nearest stall. You can use these, and I'll get a set for myself. After that, they worked mostly in silence. He'd hear her humming from time to time. It was a tune he actually knew. A Don Williams song, Lord, I Hope This Day Is Good. That was old music, stuff his dad listened to sometimes. It wasn't long until he was humming with her. A truer song couldn't have fit the day if it tried. 
The only thing he wished was different was his circumstances. He didn't like lying to his family. When he'd first had the idea, he'd been too focused on how lonely he'd be watching his brothers and sisters play with their kids and snuggle next to someone. As much as he wanted what they had, he didn't have the courage to put his heart out there. His love was spent on Angela, and he'd yet to recoup the cost. Now there was Winnie, and he was realizing that living in the past was keeping him from all the good things in life. Maybe he needed to ruminate on that a bit. After pitching the last bit of hay into the wheelbarrow, he steered it out and found Winnie leaning against the barn wall smiling. She'd beat him. You have a pretty good voice. What? He asked, freezing in his tracks. You were singing. He hadn't even realized that. I was. She pushed off the wall and closed the distance. Yeah, Don Williams. My nanny had a crush on him. He was her long, tall cup of tea. He set the fork down and leaned on the handle. My dad likes him. Well, he likes country. Guess that's where I learned to like it, too. Nanny played Don Williams more times than I can count. Him and George Jones and Conway Twitty. I was not the most popular kid in school with my music taste. Winnie laughed, crossing her arms over her chest and casting her gaze to the floor like she was reliving a sweet memory. She'd turn the music up to the point where it almost rattled my teeth and then would dance with me. I don't know if it's the music or the memories I love. Maybe both. I want to do that with my kids one day. Talk about things in common. Me too. I want to be a dad like my dad was to me, teaching me how to shoot, how to keep my word, and how to treat a woman. I'd catch him dancing with my mom from time to time. It was like they treated life as their honeymoon. Lifting her gaze to his, Winnie nodded. Yeah, I don't remember my parents being together. I think I would have liked that. I did, Bear said, putting his pitchfork and wheelbarrow up. You ready to put fresh hay down? Sure, I like the smell of hay. For a moment, he stared at her, wondering what it would be like to meet all of life's tasks with her next to him. It would certainly make short work of them. The chores had gone by faster than he could ever remember. When he'd chosen Winnie, it was because she seemed the most down-to-earth. At the time, he'd convinced himself that everything about her was fake, just like Angela. Now he could see he'd been wrong about Winnie. If he could just... What? Stop Angela from living in his head rent-free? Because she had, since the day she left. That woman had torn him to shreds, and he was still letting her mess with his life. Maybe it really was time to box her up, set her atop a bonfire, and burn her away so he could move on. He couldn't have Winnie, but that didn't mean there wasn't someone out there for him. Perhaps the new year would be his fresh start. He'd move on and find someone to love. Hopefully, he'd find someone like Winnie. Only, deep down, he knew she was one of a kind. Was there really such a thing as second best in love? Boy, the next few weeks were going to leave him in an entirely different twisted state. Except this time, the woman would be worth his thoughts. Chapter 12 Bellying up to the counter next to the sink, Winnie dried the dishes she'd used to fix the turkey as Bear washed them. It was now back in the fridge all spiced up and ready for the oven later. Since the family did late lunch on Thanksgiving, there was time before she'd need to put it in the oven. I think I'm surprised you waited until today to dress the bird. I figured that being a chef, you would have done something, I don't know, fancier? Bear shrugged. Natalie would have, but this is a mixture of her and my nanny's cooking. I hope everyone likes it. This will be the first time I've cooked for people I don't know and stayed for the reviews. She'd tried to shoo him out of the kitchen because that wasn't part of their arrangement, but he'd insisted on helping. How could she turn it down when she enjoyed his presence so much? 
After kissing her on Monday, he'd avoided her the next two days. Well, not totally. She just saw a pattern that he'd disappear when they were the only two left in a room. All day Wednesday, she'd tried to figure out a way to make things between them normal again. Then she'd devised the perfect plan. He was a man of his word. If there was one thing he'd understand, it was Winnie sticking to her promise to help him with chores. There was also the issue of the kiss. Once she made it known that she knew it wasn't a real kiss, she could see the tension lift from him. That was the nail that fixed the whole shebang. Not that she felt that way at all about their kiss. To her, it was every bit as real as a kiss could be. If she had her way, they'd still be right there in her doorway, kissing while the world just hung in suspended animation. A tiny spray of water landed on her face and she jumped. What? I've been calling your name, Bear laughed. Where did you go? Nowhere she was willing to tell him about. You could have tapped me on the shoulder. With wet hands? He asked, trying to hand her a plate. That would have only made you wetter. Maybe, but... She dipped the tips of her fingers in the water and flicked them at him. That makes us even. His jaw dropped open as he set the plate on the counter. I was trying to get your attention. He flicked her twice more in rapid succession. All right. One flick, fine. Two flicks, less fine. Three? Oh, that was a declaration of war. She cupped a little of the water in her hand and flung it at him. He tried to deflect it with his arm, and while it missed his face, some of the soap bubbles got in his hair. His eyebrows knitted together, and his lips turned down. You're getting my hair messed up. She covered her mouth with the back of her hand, laughing as he raked his hand through his hair. Your hair is fine. It's just a little water, right? For a heartbeat, he held her gaze, and she could see the mischief twinkling in his eyes. He cupped some water in his hand and splashed it at her. Only his hands were larger than hers, so it was more like getting caught in a downpour. Not fair. Totally fair. You used your hand, and I used mine. Your hands are bigger. So, fair is fair. He laughed. Now it was really on. She was using both hands this time. If she needed to mop the floor later, she would. But this cowboy was going to learn that Winnie didn't go down without a fight. Before long, the sink was empty. They were soaked, and it looked like a rainstorm had hit the inside of the kitchen. She started to turn on the faucet, and he caught her around the waist, keeping it just out of reach. This isn't over, she huffed. He caged her in his arms against the island. You win. I didn't win. You aren't wet enough. Besides, being told that she won wasn't winning. That was just losing in a nicer way. I'm soaked to my boots, he said softly, touching a finger to her chin and making her look at him. All the way to my boots. In an instant, all that water turned to steam. His lips were inches from hers and it was all she could do not to kiss him. She caressed his cheek with the back of her hand, tracing the line of his jaw until she was palming the side of his face. His eyes slid closed, and he leaned his face into her hand. Whoops! The sound of a deep male voice pulled them from the moment. I see nothing. Bear straightened. Shut up, Hunter. He turned to Winnie. Winnie, this is my brother Hunter and his wife Reagan. Hi, I'm Winnie, she replied, taking a turn shaking both their hands. She fussed with her hair. Why did she have to look like a wet mop right as she met another one of his brothers? Hi, I'm sorry about all the water. Reagan chuckled and looked around. I wish I'd met you sooner. I could have warned you about these men and water. 
I can't tell you the number of times this one has started a water war. She nodded toward her husband. Hunter wrapped Reagan in his arms. I don't start them. I merely finish them. His wife elbowed him on the arm. Not true. She looked at Winnie. If you want, I'll clean up if you want to go change. I kind of look like a wet rat. Winnie looked down at her clothes. No worse than him, Hunter teased. Bear shoved him on the shoulder. Shut up. Putting his arm around Winnie's waist, he pulled her close. I'll walk you to your room, okay? Winnie nodded, which really was the only response she could give. They were fake dating, after all. Sure. See you two later, Hunter called as they left the kitchen. It was a quiet but somewhat tense walk to her room. Maybe he was mad that the kitchen was soaked just as his brother got into town. The whole home was so tidy all the time. He'd flicked her first, though. When she paused at the door, her shoulders sagged. I'm sorry I messed up the kitchen, but you started it. If I'd known Hunter and Reagan, I'm not upset. You're not? She lifted her gaze to his. I thought that's why you wanted to walk me to my room. A smile tugged the corners of his lips up. No, I wanted to walk you to your room to tell you I enjoyed your company this morning, that I liked helping you in the kitchen. Thank you for spending time with me when you didn't have to. She touched her hand to her chest. He was thanking her for spending time with him? It was my pleasure, Bear. She circled her arms around his neck. I've enjoyed my time here. He placed his palm on the flat of her back, pressing her harder against him. I'm glad you feel that way. Winnie dropped her arms and stepped back. I'll get cleaned up and then be downstairs in a bit. Okay, he said, and then froze as their eyes locked. For a minute, she thought he was going to lay one of those toe-curling kisses on her. But he cleared his throat and strode off to the stairs. This time, Winnie watched him go. Coming or going, he looked fantastic. Dear heavens, it was only Thanksgiving, and she was falling for him. Head over heels, not a chance of slowing down kind of falling. She couldn't, though. If she fell for him, what then? With a long sigh, she shut her door and palmed her face. What could she do now? If she did something to push him away, it would hurt him, and there was no way she was doing anything like that to bear. He had a spirit as gentle as a feather, and she wasn't going to be the one to change that. All she could do was keep herself in check. If she lost every fingernail, she'd have to find that cliff she was tumbling down and latch on before she hit bottom. That was her only solution. She was returning to San Antonio, and he was staying on his ranch. It was the West Texas version of a Nicholas Sparks novel. There wasn't enough tissue made to wipe away the buckets of tears she was sure to shed when it came time to go home. Chapter 13 The house was filled with the scent of Thanksgiving dinner. While Bear thought Bandit's cooking was delicious, Winnie was giving him serious competition. The turkey, especially. That thing was going to be picked clean by the time dinner was over. I've got the turkey, Winnie. You take the mashed potatoes. A large grin lifted her lips as she picked up the bowl. I'll wait for you. After slipping on some oven mitts, he pulled the oven open, and his mouth watered. It was brown and juicy looking, and he was hungry. He took it out of the oven and closed the door with his foot. I'm right behind you. As they entered the dining room, his family gushed. Oh my goodness, it already smelled so good, and that was a faint whiff while it was in the oven. This close, I'm thinking we should have cooked one for each of us his dad said, as Bear set it down in the middle of the table. Winnie, I think you might have spoiled us, Pauline Fredericks added. Deep red blanketed Winnie's cheeks, 
and Bear's chest swelled with pride. His girl had hit it out of the park, and he was proud of her. Then it dawned on him that he'd thought of her as his girl. Well, she was, for the moment. Plus, it seemed she needed someone to have her back. He could do that. Just as she turned from setting the bowl of mashed potatoes down, he caught her around the waist and set his lips against her ear. I'm proud of you, not for this food, but for your heart. With this meal, you've put that on display, and it's beautiful. There's no doubt in my mind that your restaurant will be successful. When she responded with a sniffle, he leaned back and found her furiously wiping away tears. He pressed a kiss to her temple. Thank you for being here. Winnie kept her head down as they took their seats, but he could see her smiling. Being the source of it made him feel useful to someone. Sure, running the ranch and providing jobs and a home that his family could gather in was great. But that wasn't nearly as satisfying as being someone's reason for happiness. Well, his dad said and stood. As in past years, he'd taken one end of the table while Amos Fredericks took the other. Here we are once again, another year deserving of our thankfulness that our families can come together. He tipped his head in Amos's direction. Amos stood. Our family grew again this year with the addition of Camry and Molly and Ellie, and it will soon grow with one more. He smiled at Molly, who rubbed her growing belly as Josiah beamed. Love and family, the same thing Bear was desperately searching for. Continuing, Amos turned to Pauline. King and I have found ourselves blessed beyond measure. Pauline took his hand, nodding. More than blessed. Bear's dad started again. Yes, and now we have Winnie Fordham added to the fold. She lifted her head and smiled. We would like to offer our gratitude to you for this meal. Thank you, Winnie. We're glad to call you one of ours. He grinned and took his seat. I couldn't have said it better. Amos added, and then sat. While they ate, the conversation was mostly directed at Winnie. Bandit's cooking was great. No one was implying otherwise. Bear's family loved him, but they loved the meal she'd prepared. In private, Bear would choose hers. Once the meal was finished, his family cleared the table, keeping Winnie from lifting a finger. She'd lifted enough for the day. It felt like it would take a week before Bear would be able to eat another bite. And with the sluggish way his family was getting around, they seemed to agree. That didn't mean they weren't up for cards. His mom and Pauline had taken the kids upstairs to get them ready for bed so that those with the littles could play. They'd thrown the names in a hat and had drawn Rook. Josiah couldn't lie to save his life when it came to people. But in cards, Bear's brother was ruthless, and Rook was his thing. Oh, come on, Josiah, are you going to play or not? Gabby asked, as he took his time making a move. At this rate, we'll be leaving for Black Friday before this game is over. Bear leaned over to Winnie. I told you. She giggled. You did. Carrie Ann sat between Winnie and Israel. She shook her head. I think he gets slower every year. All of you hush, Josiah grumbled. Molly rolled her lips in and looked away, before laying her arm across his shoulders and kissing him on the cheek. This is the only time he can tell a lie, she said, looking at Winnie. That's what Bear told me. Can I help it that I'm a naturally honest person? This is cards. It's different. Molly leaned her head on his shoulder. Whatever, babe. So, Winnie, are you coming shopping with us? No pressure, but we have a ton of fun, Carrie Ann said. Winnie looked at Bear. Uh, actually, I think I will. The airline called me earlier, and they still haven't found my luggage. In addition to my knives, some of my clothes were in there, and a few other things I'd like to replace. Bear set his cards down. They called. You didn't tell me you had other stuff in there. 
she'd lost her things because of him. She'd agreed to the arrangement, but it wasn't supposed to cost her anything but time. It was while I was getting cleaned up after chores. I just forgot about it until now. I mean, if you're going to lose stuff, this is the best time of the year. Everything's on sale. She smiled. Well, I'd like to help with that. Don't worry about it. You already replaced some of the knives. Maybe they will still find my bag. And with me taking another flight, I probably should wait to buy a lot of it until I get back home. Will you be doing Christmas with your family after the new year then? Bear's dad asked. Winnie nodded. My stepfather travels a lot, so the timing just worked for me to get to spend it with Bear this year. Well, we're glad you were able to make it. Bear was thinking the same thing. He'd enjoyed their water fight, working with her in the kitchen, and everything in between. Her laughter had filled the kitchen, and it was the first time his home had really felt like a home. Of course, he felt that way when his family visited. But with them gone, it was just walls and paint. Winnie made it more than that. It had been so long since he'd given companionship a thought, and he hadn't realized how much he'd missed it. Just being her friend, having her near, brightened the place. But he shouldn't let himself think that way. Not when she was leaving in a few weeks. She'd go on her merry way, and he'd still be working the ranch alone. Yeah, Angela had taken a lot of his time. The new year wasn't going to be the same song. He had a life, and he needed to live it. Now that he'd had a reminder of what life could be like with someone special in it, he wasn't going back to the way things were. And while there was a huge part of him that wished it was Winnie, he couldn't dwell on that. It would only cast a shadow on something new, He'd spent enough time under a rain cloud. It was time to let the sun shine again. Chapter 14 It had been a while since Winnie had been Black Friday shopping. She hadn't remembered the traffic, the crowds, the pushing and shoving. Four dollar mittens for a dollar as a doorbuster wasn't exactly that huge of a deal. Certainly not worth getting elbowed in the ribs. Who needed 20 pairs of mittens? Okay, was it just me, or were people taking the doorbusters entirely too seriously this year? Asked Reagan. Winnie shook her head. No, that was nuts. They'd stopped at a breakfast place before heading back to Caprock Canyon. Mrs. West, or Carolyn, she'd quickly shot down being called Mrs., had needed a little coffee for the drive. Gabby raked her hand through her hair and then tied it in a ponytail again. Good grief and gravy, some of those people needed a refresher on manners. Carrie Ann took a sip of her coffee. Right? That guy who took the pillow out of my cart? Who does that? It was a $3 pillow. Yeah, I'd stuck it in Carrie Ann's cart. I was getting it for Captain, Reagan said, leaning forward. I found the cutest pattern online for a doggy stuffed animal. He's so big and he just chews through everything lately. He's a big old baby. Bear had told Winnie about Captain. She'd hoped Reagan and Hunter would bring him, but they'd left him at home in Georgia. He was going through the terrible twos, or that's what Reagan was calling it. They'd done puppy training classes and even gone through advanced classes. He was a well-mannered dog, but he was a chewing machine, apparently. He'd taken a corner of their door like he was a beaver, and Reagan didn't trust him to go anywhere. At least we got the pillow back, Carrie Ann said. He looked positively shocked that I demanded to have my pillow, acting like he had no idea what I was talking about. He must have been from out of state because he wouldn't have tried that had he been Texan. Our men are smart enough not to pull stunts like that. Carolyn set her elbows on the table and yawned. Oh, Carrie Ann, it's true. Laughing, Carolyn waved her off and looked at Winnie. So, Bear said you were thinking about opening your own restaurant. 
Nodding, Winnie smiled. I am. I've secured a location, and I'm currently talking with a contractor about the kitchen remodel to fit the new appliances I've purchased. The seating wasn't exactly the atmosphere I was going for, and I've been talking, looking for replacements. Sounds like a ton of work, Stephanie added. Pauline nodded. It sounds like you've been working on this a while. Winnie took a sip of her water. I have. I had a little setback, but things seem to have worked out now. A setback? asked Carrie Ann. What happened? My best friend emptied our bank account and ran off with her boyfriend. All the startup money was gone. Winnie paused to give herself a second to think of a way she would have replaced the money without telling them the truth. I got it back, though, so it was only a small delay. That's awful, Gabby said. Has she apologized or anything? Not hardly. Winnie had tried contacting her right after it happened, and Tammy wouldn't answer. No, she left a note and took off. Carolyn patted Winnie's hand. I'm so sorry. That had to be devastating. Not just because you had to postpone things, but that your friend would take the money and leave you. What a horrible thing to do. I was angry at first, believe me, but she didn't have the best home life. She was a little manipulative and somewhat overbearing, and I put up with a lot because I was too forgiving. Pauline shook her head. Oh, sweetheart, I'm sorry. It's okay. Molly nibbled on a piece of bacon and then set it down. Do you have a specialty dessert? Carrie Ann snorted and covered her mouth with one hand. This girl loves her sweets. Pie. I love pie. That's not sweets, as in plural, and I can't help it. She rubbed her belly. The baby asks for it nightly. The last sentence was said with a slight Scottish accent, and she laughed while everyone just looked at her. Seriously? You guys have still not watched So I Married an Axe Murderer? Stephanie touched Winnie's hand. She does this stuff all the time. Molly barked a laugh. I'd deny it, but it'd be a lie. I'm so glad you came with us today. Did you have fun? Carolyn asked. Yes, ma'am, I really did. Bear, oh, that amazingly wonderful man, had given her a credit card with her name on it, something he would have done long before she arrived at the ranch. Black Friday was a tradition with the women in his family, and he'd figured she'd be invited. He didn't want her to feel left out. She'd tried to make him take it back, but he wouldn't. He'd kissed her forehead, hugged her, and told her she deserved to have a good time shopping after fixing such a fantastic meal. It wasn't near worth what he'd whispered in her ear just as they sat down to eat. Bear had brought her to tears, called her heart beautiful. He was proud of her, believed in her. He'd leaned back, and she knew he was being truthful. He really had faith in her that she'd be successful. Are you okay? asked Pauline. Wiping her eyes, Winnie nodded. I'm fine. Just glad I could come spend the holidays with Bear. Oh, sweetie, I'm sure he feels the same way. He's been alone too long. Carolyn tapped the rim of her coffee mug as a waiter passed by. A second later, her cup was filled, and steam was billowing from it. He was really hurt the last time he dated. I was thrilled when he started telling me he was seeing someone and had invited you to spend the holidays with us. Winnie wanted so badly to ask about Angela, but she wanted that information to come from Bear. Getting the information from anyone else would be a breach of trust in her mind. Plus, she and Bear weren't really together, and growing closer to him would only make it harder to leave. Those secrets needed to be shared with someone who planned to build a life with him. That wasn't her. She liked him truly enjoyed the kiss they'd shared, but he'd only kissed her because of Stephanie. He didn't want more than what they'd agreed to, and Winnie knew that was for the better anyway. 
Chapter 15 The day of shopping had worn the women out. With that in mind, Bear had asked Winnie to sleep in instead of helping with the horses the next morning. She'd tried to tell him she was okay, but with the dark circles under her eyes, her argument was short lived. The women had fixed some sandwiches and spent the remainder of the evening resting. Then they'd gone to bed earlier than usual. After finishing with the horses, Bear saddled Spur, his gelding, and went looking for his three ranch hands, Caleb, Jace, and Mark. There were a few pregnant heifers close to calving, and they'd be checking them daily until the calves arrived. He found the lead ranch hand, Caleb Watson, returning to his bunkhouse. Hey, Bear, he said, slowing his horse as he reached his boss. So far, Bear was impressed with the man. He'd taken charge of the other hands like he'd been there since the beginning. The man had a work ethic akin to Bear's. Whatever needed to be done, they did it. That was a rare find these days. Hey, any calves yet? Yeah, three so far. One isn't doing so great. Jace has taken that one to his bunkhouse. He wants to try and save it. Caleb rubbed his horse's neck. I told him it was fine with me. Bear was glad he'd decided to give each ranch hand's cabin their own small barn. It made it easier for them to take care of their horses, as well as other ranch animals, as Jace was doing with the calf. Jace Knight was the last ranch hand to arrive. He was the guy Wyatt had recommended. Until recently, Jace had toured with the rodeo as its newest star. Then he'd allowed fame to go to his head. Roughly two months ago, he'd found himself in a bar fight, and then in the county jail. His sponsors had fled like he had the plague, leaving him broke and no place to go. How's Jace's attitude? asked Bear. Caleb chuckled. Terrible, though slowly improving, but he also knows we're the only ones willing to give him a place to stay at the moment. As long as he remembers that, we're good. Bear glanced around the property. All right, anything else I need to know? Nah, things are running smooth. There's something off about Mark that I can't put my finger on. I keep thinking I've seen him before, but I don't know where. Bear had thought the same thing when he interviewed Mark Anderson. Of course, he'd run a background check and it was all fine. With no red flags, Bear had hired him. Is he not getting the job done? Shaking his head, Caleb said, No, he's good, but I feel like he's hiding something. Can't hold that against him, though. We all have our secrets. Yeah, everyone had their secrets. As long as he's doing well, he can have his secrets. That's what I thought. Is everything okay with the family? Thanks for the Thanksgiving meal you sent out to the hands. It was amazing. I'm just sorry I didn't think to invite you all in for the actual meal with the family. I hope you all will join us for Christmas dinner. The family is fine. The ladies went shopping yesterday and they were all tuckered by the time they got back. I suspect they'll sleep in a while. Caleb grunted a laugh. I'd rather pay full price than deal with all that nonsense. You'll never catch me in that mess. With a snort, Bear shook his head. I've learned never is never a good word to use. True, I guess I've doomed myself to Black Friday shopping in the future. His horse shifted, and he rubbed her neck again. It's cold. I'm going to take Lanny to the barn, give her a good rub down, and then huddle around the fire. Bear gave him a small two-finger salute. Sounds good to me. I think I'll do the same. With that, they went their separate ways. Back at the barn, Bear brushed Spur, blanketed him, and put him out so he could graze. On his way to his room, he spied Winnie on the back deck, wrapped in a blanket and sitting in her rocker. Instead of going to his room, he stepped outside to see if she was okay. You mind if I join you? She looked over her shoulder at him. No, I don't mind at all. Bear pulled his rocker closer to hers slipping his hands into his pockets. It's a little cold out here. Yeah, it is, but I really like it. There was a sadness in her voice. It had been a great day in his opinion. 
Is something wrong? Because if it's something I've done, I apologize. Shaking her head, she picked at a string on her sweater. No, you haven't done anything. I'm just starting to feel terribly guilty for lying to your family. They've been so sweet to me. He understood that. He never liked lying to people. Even his justification in the beginning wasn't giving him a reprieve now. I've been thinking the same thing. Lying to them hurts. How do we fix this then? That's a good question. Part of him wanted to come clean. But if he did that, he wouldn't have an excuse to kiss her anymore. Simply put, that bothered him just as much or more than the lying did. What was the solution when his head and his heart couldn't come to terms? Before he had a chance to really think it through, he said, Maybe we don't pretend the rest of the time and actually date instead, knowing it will end after the new year. As soon as the words left his lips, he considered taking them back. But it seemed to be the best solution to him. His family wouldn't know he'd lied, and his heart would remain safe. If he knew the relationship was ending, he could keep that in mind when they were together. There was no chance for a heartbreak for either of them when the terms were laid out in black and white. She twisted in the seat and faced him. Don't pretend? Well, we can drop the deal and just enjoy our time together so it isn't a lie anymore. But after the holidays, you've got a restaurant in San Antonio that needs to be opened, and I have this ranch. After wanting it so many years, I just... Winnie touched his arm. I get it. She chewed her bottom lip as if she was struggling to decide. Maybe she was thinking he wouldn't pay her the rest of the money since that was the deal from the beginning. I'll still provide the other half of the money. After enjoying your food today, I'll consider it an investment for a friend. What he thought would give her peace made her expression even more like a raging war. That's not what he wanted at all. He was sincere when he offered the rest of the money. It was only fair since he was altering the agreement. He's the one who initiated it. If she was agreeable, couldn't he change it? He tried to explain. I'm the one changing things, not you. Now that I've gotten to know you, I realize I've put you in a bind. You're honest and sweet. You would have never lied to my family or me. It's just not in you. I wouldn't, but... You run this ranch. That much money is a huge amount. I don't want to put you in a bind either. I'm a billionaire, Winnie. It had left his mouth before he could rope it back. But of the things he was worried about telling her, that one wasn't nearly as closely guarded as the other. I'm not hurting for money. She blinked a few times, her mouth opening and closing at almost the same rate. A bit... a billionaire? She tilted her head like the word was foreign to her tongue. I am. A few years ago now, we won the lottery. That one that kept rolling over until it was in the billions? Well, my brother's sister and I won it. Oh my, I don't think I'd want to win that kind of money, she mused as she looked down. I can't imagine the stress and frustration that comes with it. Sometimes money only makes things worse. Truer words had never been spoken. You're right about that. I told you so you wouldn't worry about it. He paused a second. I'm okay if you just want to come clean, too. I don't want to be the cause of any grief to you. I like you, Bear. I wouldn't have to. I like you, too. And this way we can enjoy the holidays. You can go back to San Antonio and I can stay here. We'd know the whole time where everything stood so there'd be no hard feelings. No hard feelings, but they'd definitely be hurt. Winnie lifted her head and their eyes locked. When she remained quiet, he wondered if maybe he needed to reassure her a little more. I'm really not ready for a full-time girlfriend yet. Surely that would give her what she needed. She wasn't the sort of woman to hurt people, and this was him solidifying that he'd be okay when she left. It would break his heart, but in the best way possible. He'd be setting her free to be happy, even if that meant he wasn't in the picture. 
Slowly, she nodded, and a tiny smile corked on her lips. She stuck out her hand. I can handle that deal. There was something different in her touch this time. It didn't set his nerves aflame. It was a slow burn, like grass in the spring. The fire would char the dead, making way for new growth, something he'd needed the last few years. At least now he wouldn't be lying to his family. Not that he was going to tell them he had been in the first place. There was no sense in making a ruckus when he could legitimately call her his girlfriend. They didn't need to know it would end when he took her to the airport, and it was a fact he was going to tuck into the back of his mind for the duration of her stay. The little taste of happiness he'd had the last few days had taught him life alone wasn't possible anymore. He'd mourn the loss of Winnie for a bit, pick up the pieces of his heart, and find someone to love. Chapter 16 Tuesday morning, the rattling of Winnie's phone pulled her from a miserable nightmare. For once, she was thankful for being woken up. She grabbed her phone and put it to her ear. Hello? Winnie, it's Mom. Sitting up, Winnie palmed her forehead. What's up, Mom? She pulled the phone away just long enough to read the time. Three in the morning? It was only 30 minutes ago that she'd fallen asleep. In the few days following her talk with Bear, she'd done nothing but dream about him. Making that deal with him to not pretend to be dating, but to actually date? It had mixed her up in ways she never thought possible. She'd laugh, cried, and been tempted to pull her hair out. The confession that she felt guilty lying to his family hadn't been an attempt to change their deal. On the contrary, it had been a wish that she was a real member of the West Fredericks family. They'd embraced her like she was a long-lost member, and she loved the feeling of belonging when she was around them. Getting to know them made it easier to understand Bear's desire to have someone during the holidays. His siblings were so happy with their spouses and children, and there he was, an outsider in his own home. If she'd been in his shoes, she may have done the same thing. Then he'd suggested they stop pretending. For a moment, she'd been confused. The only reason she was at the ranch was to pretend to be dating. And when he'd clarified his suggestion, her heart had sunk until he reminded her why their relationship couldn't continue. That she had a restaurant in San Antonio and he couldn't leave his ranch. If there was one thing she understood, it was having a dream. His wealth was merely a blip in their conversation. She didn't care about his money, and she'd struggled just managing the startup funds her father had given her. Adding that many more zeros would have only made it harder. When she tried to tell him she liked him, that she didn't need to pretend, he'd interrupted her, telling her they could enjoy the holidays and at the end, part with no hard feelings. Her head and heart were in a battle. Her dream of owning a restaurant was in direct conflict with wanting Bear. Then he'd said he couldn't handle a full-time girlfriend, and the battle turned into a war. What did she really want? With no clear winner, she'd opted for the safe route. She'd spend the holidays with Bear, soak him up, and leave with her heart still intact. That was as close to having both him and her dream as she could get. Maybe she would have felt better if he'd kissed her a few times since then, but for some reason, he'd held back after their handshake. She took that to mean he was giving her time to get used to the idea. Maybe. Or the most logical reason was that he didn't want to hurt her. She'd been half-joking when she told him she'd punch Angela's lights out. But now, Winnie would sock her in the nose, and that woman would be lucky if a surgeon could fix it. Bear was Prince Charming. He even had a horse. The sound of her mom sniffling quickly pulled her from her thoughts. Mom, it's your dad. 
He's been rushed to the hospital. He's had a heart attack. Sucking in a sharp breath, Winnie's chest constricted. A heart attack? He's the healthiest person I know. Another few sniffles. I know. Who found him? He felt it coming on and took an aspirin and called emergency. Since I'm his emergency contact, they just called. She hesitated a moment. Winnie's shoulders rounded. What, Mom? I know you're doing your deal with that man, but I'd really like it if you came to the hospital. Mama, you don't even have to ask, Winnie replied as she hopped out of bed. I'll be there as quick as I can. Thank you, sweetheart. I'll see you when I get there. They said their goodbyes, and Winnie took a deep breath. Bear, she needed to tell him. Hopefully, he wouldn't be too upset. She quickly strode from her room and took the steps two at a time before breaking into a near run to get to his room. She knocked a few times and then again even louder. Bear! The door opened and for a second she was frozen. A bare-chested bear was a sight to behold. She knew he was muscular, but this wasn't bulging bodybuilder muscles. His body was lean muscle. Waking up to him wouldn't be a chore at all, even if his hair was sticking up funny. A soft voice chastised her. Here she was, drooling over Bear's hotness, and her dad was in the hospital. What's wrong? he asked, his voice husky as he rubbed his eyes with his hand. My dad had a heart attack. My mom's asked me to come to the hospital. I'm so sorry. Then it hit her. Her dad, the man she fought with tooth and nail, was in the hospital. They butted heads, but she loved him. She knew he wasn't being mean when he was pushing her toward things she didn't want. He cared about her, her future. She was just as guilty when it came to listening to him. Bear gathered her into a hug. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Let me get dressed and we'll go right now. She leaned back, her vision blurry with tears. You'd go with me? Well, yeah, if you want me to, I will. What about the cattle, the horses? He kissed her forehead. Darling, I've got three brothers, my dad, Amos, and a brother-in-law, plus my hired hands. Shoot, my mom could rustle cattle. The ranch will be just fine without me for a few days. She hugged him tightly. I'd really, really like it if you did. Yes, ma'am. Let's get dressed and pack. I'll let my mom and dad know. They'll fill in the family when they wake up. Okay, Winnie said, stepping back. I'll go pack. I'll get our tickets, and we can stay at my mom's house so it's not so expensive. The distance she'd given him was erased as he pulled her back into his arms. I'll worry about those details, sweetheart. You pack, stay close to the phone for your mama, and don't worry about anything else. The tears spilled over. She didn't want him to think she wanted any of his money. He could be the poorest guy in Texas, and he'd be worth billions to her. Are you sure? I don't want your money, Bear. I promise I don't. He gave her a squeeze and said, I know you don't. It's all right. She stood there in his arms, basking in his comfort for a moment. I'll hurry. Pulling away, she took a few steps and stopped. We can still stay at my mom's house so you don't have to find us a hotel. He smiled. Yes, ma'am. With one last look, she hurried back to her room. Bear was coming with her. She'd have his shoulder to cry on, his strength to carry her, his kindness to bind her together. The last time she and her dad fought, they'd both said ugly things to each other. Of course, she'd apologized, but only half-heartedly. When she saw him, she'd apologize for real and mean it. Her dad meant the world to her. The only reason she'd been so determined was because she wanted him to be proud of her. He'd worked long hours when she was a kid, but he'd always made it to her silly elementary plays and softball games, and he'd even rented a limo for her and her prom date. Her dad loved her. She just needed to be okay with his brand of love. 
Between now and the time she saw him, she'd figure out a way to do that. Chapter 17 Bear should have known if he woke his parents, they'd wake everyone up. Perhaps it was a good thing. His family had a way of coming together in a crisis. Hunter called a friend with a private jet, and they'd offered to let Bear and Winnie use it to fly to Houston. It had been fueled and ready to go when they arrived in Amarillo. Reagan had brewed them some coffee for the road, going so far as to pack a few thermoses with coffee and hot water, in case Winnie needed some tea. His girl had grown quiet as everyone fussed over her. He figured it was because she was overwhelmed with worry. A person could fight to the death with someone they loved and still want to hold them when they hurt. It's okay. I'm sure if anything was wrong, your mom would have called again, Bear said, taking her hand in his. I don't doubt your father's in the best hands. Winnie turned to him, her eyes red-rimmed from crying. We fought the last time I saw him. We haven't talked, really talked, for a long while. We were cordial, but that was about as good as it got. He had this plan for me. It was paint by color, but I liked coloring outside the lines. He was suit and tie, and I was jeans and sneakers. He knew you loved him. Kids fight with their parents. It's not a measure of how much they love each other. It's growing up. He tucked a piece of her hair behind her ear. I know if I had a little girl, it wouldn't matter if she was five or fifty, she'd always be my baby. I'd always want what was best, to know she's safe. Perhaps he just loved you so much he struggled to let you go. It's not that he didn't want you to fly, he just didn't want you to fall and get hurt. Tears pooled in her eyes once more, and Bear wished more than anything that he could soothe her hurts. Pulling her closer, he wrapped his arms around her, rubbing her back. He didn't say it was going to be okay. In truth, he had no idea if it would be. Mostly, he just wanted her to know he was there, so she knew she wasn't alone. Spending the flight holding her was a treasure. The only thing he hated about it was the circumstances. In the days after their talk about dating, he'd held back. He didn't want her to think he'd only made the deal so he could kiss her. He wanted her to know that he liked all of her. If all he got was her sitting next to him, that would be all right by him. Of course, he wouldn't refuse a kiss. He wasn't that stupid. Once the plane landed, they'd been greeted by a driver. Apparently, his brother Wyatt knew someone in the area, and he'd called before they arrived. It was nice that he and Winnie didn't have to wait for a car and that the driver knew the area. The situation was stressful enough without dealing with navigating Houston. The closer they got to the hospital, the more relaxed Winnie became. Her mother hadn't called once, and they took that as a good sign. Surely her mom would have notified her if anything had changed. The other side of that was maybe the news was too bad and it was an in-person kind of thing. Bear didn't speak that thought aloud. Winnie's mom greeted them at the elevator, enveloping her in a hug. I'm so glad you're here. The woman was definitely a lawyer. In a knee-length pencil skirt, soft blouse, and her hair pulled back into a braid, she looked every part the shark to take someone down in court. Bear did not want to get in this woman's crosshairs. She kept her arm around Winnie as her gaze raked from the top of his head to the tip of his boots. Thank you for accompanying my daughter. I appreciate it. You're welcome, he said, offering his hand to shake. Her gaze dropped to his hand and then back up. Winnie needs to be with her family right now. I'm sure you understand. The not welcome sign couldn't have been larger if she tried. Yes, ma'am, he said, stepping back and pressing the down button for the elevator. Mom, Winnie said, pulling away. He's not going anywhere. I asked him to be here. It's okay, Bear smiled. Your mom's right. This is time to stick close to family. Shaking her head, Winnie put her arm around his waist. Please stay. 
Now what should he do? Mrs. I'm sorry. I don't know if I should call you Mrs. Dawson or something else. Dawson is fine. Mrs. Dawson, I'm in a bit of a predicament here. I can see you'd like me to leave, and I've got Winnie asking me to stay. I want to be respectful to you, but if she's asking me to stay, I'm not moving. She comes first in my world. Her mom crossed her arms over her chest, eyeing him. I know about your deal with my daughter. You can save the charm for someone else. This... That deal is over. We're friends, Winnie said. I want him to stay. The word friend sucked the air from his lungs. He was okay with that term until it came from Winnie. He wanted to be more than that, but that meant risking his heart, which he just couldn't do. With that little reminder, the term friend would have to do. Winnie's mom seemed to have a silent standoff with her daughter. A moment later, her hands dropped to her sides and she sighed. Okay, she held out her hand. I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to be nasty. Shaking her hand, he replied, Mrs. Dawson, it's a stressful situation. No one should be expected to be on their best behavior when someone they care about is hurt. Plus, she's your little girl. Believe me, I'd be the same way. She swallowed hard. Thank you for that. Can we see him yet? asked Winnie. Yeah, come on. Her mom held her hand out, and Winnie took it with Bear following. Before they reached the room, a man's voice could be heard. Oh, for crying out loud, the only paper you get is the Houston Sun Examiner? That's not a paper, it's a gossip rag. Mrs. Dawson pinched the bridge of her nose. Why does he always have to be so difficult? She strode into the room, leaving Winnie and Bear at the doorway. Oh, Jim, stop. What? The man's gaze landed on Bear. The man sported the same color of hair Winnie did, with a few gray hairs mixed in. Who is that? Winnie laced her fingers in Bear's and crossed the room to her dad's bedside, bringing Bear with her. This is Bear West. He owns a ranch in Caprock Canyon. A ranch? You're an Ivy League-educated woman. What could you possibly have in common with this man? Do you even know anything about cattle? Bear wondered if the man had an off switch. He'd seen folks after a heart attack, and this guy didn't look like the ones he'd seen at all. He was an overcranked spring. Jim! Mrs. Dawson covered his hand with hers. Please slow down. You had a mini stroke. You need to rest. For a divorced couple, they sure didn't seem very divorced. Mini stroke? Winnie asked. I thought it was a heart attack. Her mom shook her head. They thought that at first, but changed their diagnosis. Her father grunted and eyed Bear again. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Fordham, Bear said, extending his hand in hopes that the man would shake it. Apparently, her father did have a few manners because he did shake Bear's hand. What kind of ranch do you have? It's a cattle ranch. How many acres? Bear held in a chuckle, thinking these were the kind of questions he might hit a person with if his own children brought someone around. 960. That's a sizable place. How many heads are you running? My great-grandfather was a rancher. Excellent businessman. You have to be to keep it going. Too much fluff and you'll go under. Yes, sir, I agree. I bought it a few years ago. The family who had it went under. I've slowly been building it up, and I've got about 800 head of grass-fed, both for selling and self-consumption. A sense of pride filled Bear as he spoke. He didn't get much of a chance to talk about his ranch very often, so he hadn't really thought about it until now. Nodding, her dad smiled. Grass-fed, you say? That's good beef. And you bought it a few years ago? Yes, sir. Call me Jim. Again, Bear choked down laughter. Sheesh, Winnie's dad really didn't have an off switch. Jim, yes, about four years ago. 
My dad and a family friend helped me plan it before we started bringing the cattle onto the land. Took a year to get things the way I wanted them, but it's running pretty smooth right now. Bear placed his hand on Winnie's back. I'd love to talk more about it, but Winnie's been pretty worried about you. He smiled at Winnie. I'm kind of thirsty after all the travel. I think I'll go downstairs and get something to drink. Mrs. Dawson mouthed, thank you. Bear pressed a kiss to the top of Winnie's head. I'll be back shortly. He winked and left the room. Hopefully, Winnie and her dad could have a good conversation while Bear was gone, one that would help their relationship. As far as meeting her parents went, it had gone pretty good. Not that it changed their circumstances, but it felt good to know that if he and Winnie were actually dating, they wouldn't hate him. For some reason, that gave him a pep in his step. Chapter 18 Hey, Dad. Winnie shuffled a little closer to the bed, not feeling like an adult at all. That was typically how she felt around her dad, though, like the nine-year-old in pigtails and a poofy dress, when all she wanted to do was dig for bugs. It had always been difficult for her and her dad to see eye to eye. Her dad laid his head back on the pillow. Your mom didn't need to call you and make you fly to Houston. It was just a minor stroke. I'm fine. Scoffing, her mom said, They said you need to take a vacation. He rolled his eyes. I've got too much work, but... He cut a glance at Winnie. If I had my daughter, maybe my workload would be a little lighter because I'd have someone I trust to lean on. Winnie inhaled and let it out slowly. Dad, I hate law. Yes, I have a degree. Yes, I have the ability. No. Aside from that, she hadn't fit in with her classmates when she was in college. She wasn't a pantsuit kind of girl. You could do something other than divorce. I've been looking into intellectual digital property rights. You could do that. Dad, I prepared Thanksgiving dinner for Bear's family. I wish you could have been there. I wish you could have heard them. I wish you could... I wish you could see me. His face fell. I do see you, sweetheart. I do. No, you really don't. But I want you to know that I'm sorry for all the horrible things I said to you the last time we spoke. I know you love me. You want the best for me. He sat up a little and looked down at the bed. I just don't want to see you fail. Restaurants are so hard. There's food cost, staff, people you'll have to depend on. He lifted his head. Every day, people come into my office with sad stories of someone letting them down. Every single day. I didn't want you hurt like that. Winnie had never seen it that way, that he was wanting to protect her from heartbreak. Dad, Tammy ran off with the money. She what? Her mom sighed. Tammy emptied the bank account and ran off with her boyfriend. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. That wasn't the response Winnie expected at all. You don't think I deserved it? She asked. All this time, she'd thought for sure he'd laugh at her and hold it over her as proof he was right. Shaking his head, he said, No, never. The reason I didn't want you opening a restaurant in San Antonio is because the industry is volatile. Between food costs and paying staff, it's so easy for it to go under. Yes, I want you to be a lawyer, but only because it's safe. Everyone needs a lawyer. Winnie snickered and then barked a laugh. And before she knew it, she was laughing harder than she had in a long while. Bear was right. Her dad loved her and didn't want her to get hurt. So, all this time, you just wanted me to have job stability? Well, yeah. It's just practical to pick a profession that is always in demand. When I looked up the area in San Antonio, it seemed to me there was a restaurant opening weekly with at least two closing. With a loud groan, her mom sat in the nearby chair. I told the both of you to just sit down and talk, but no one wants to listen to the mom. She crossed her legs. 
Now that you two are actually speaking again, I have a question. Do you really want to open a restaurant in San Antonio? Or were you just being obstinate because your father was trying to tell you what to do? Winnie's pulse jumped. She had to return to San Antonio. Quitting wasn't an option. Of course I do. Yes, she'd enjoyed her time with Bear, but he'd been clear that he didn't want a girlfriend. Even if he did, would she have regrets later? She loved how he'd held her on the plane, admired him for standing up to her mom, and appreciated the support he'd given her from the moment she'd told him about her dad. It was a good thing she'd kept her feelings to herself when she and Bear were talking. If she hadn't, she would have hurt him. Now that she was talking about it with her dad, the very idea that she'd fold made her want to throw up. Yes, I want to open it. I'm really close, too. Okay, her mom regarded her a moment. I just wanted to make sure. Remember, I lived with him before I lived with you. He wrote the definition for stubborn. No, I did not, Henrietta. Her dad raised an eyebrow. Yes, you did. He sat up a little further. No, I didn't. Dad. Winnie used the tone he'd normally use with her when she wouldn't stop. Flopping back, he said, Fine, but I'm not stubborn. With a snort, her mom rolled her lips in and then laughed. I think there's a mule in your bloodline. Winnie tried to hold back a laugh and couldn't. She'd missed her dad and hated that it took a hospital visit to reconcile. They were talking, though. Something good had come from something that could have gone a very different way. For that, she was grateful. As soon as her dad was cleared to leave the hospital, she'd return to Caprock Canyon with Bear, spend the holiday with him, and then go home to start her dream. Now that she'd made up with her dad, the dream was even that much more important to her. Chapter 19 After two days in the hospital, Winnie's dad was released, with an appointment scheduled for a cardiologist. Apparently, this was the best doctor in Houston, so it had taken an additional week to get in to see him. Most likely, the doctor would want to run tests and Winnie wouldn't want to leave until she knew the results, which would take a few more days. Bear had already been gone from the ranch for a week and a half, but he hadn't broached the subject of returning to the ranch with Winnie yet. Adding another level to her stress wasn't right. Her dad was more important. Being a support for her meant more to him, and his ranch was in good hands. They hadn't wasted time while waiting for the appointment. Winnie had shown him around Houston. He'd been there before, but it was fun to see things from her perspective. When they weren't sightseeing, he was doing his best to stay out of her way so she could work on her restaurant. Bear slipped his hands into his pajama pockets and stared out the window of Mrs. Dawson's high-rise apartment. When Winnie said house, he wasn't thinking a penthouse in the Galleria area of Houston. It shouldn't have surprised him since her mom was a lawyer and her stepfather was an accountant for an oil company that took him all over the world. According to Mrs. Dawson, he was in Dubai until Christmas. The sun was barely peaking on the horizon, but he'd been up most of the night. Between the new bed and wondering if Winnie would stay in Houston now that she'd made up with her dad, it had been next to impossible to sleep. While it made his heart happy for her, it made him wonder if she didn't need him anymore. Footsteps behind him caused him to turn around to find Mrs. Dawson hurrying as she slipped on her high heels. The night before, she'd let Winnie and Bear know she'd be going into the office until Jim's doctor appointment. She stopped short. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake anyone. You didn't. I've been awake a while. I bet you're anxious not being on your ranch. Sure, that's the excuse he'd use. A little, but my family can handle it until I get back. Mrs. Dawson opened her briefcase sitting on the entry table by the door, rifled through it a second, and then closed it. 
I'll see you and Winnie later today. It's nice you're friends with Jim. A smile quirked on her lips. We are better as friends. I'll always love him, but we didn't need to live together. I can understand that. She joined Bear at the window, crossing her arms. You know, when Winnie told me about your deal with her, I was worried. I even tried to talk her out of it. Chuckling, he nodded. I'd take issue if my kids ever did what I did. I didn't like lying to my parents, but... But... I couldn't handle another year of being the odd man out. My siblings are all married now with kids running around. I just didn't want sad looks pointed in my direction. He'd keep the rest of the reason to himself. If he was telling anyone, Winnie would be first. I think I can understand that. I went to my high school reunion not long after having Winnie. Most of my old classmates had 2.5 kids, white picket fences, and minivans. Her posture relaxed and she sighed. There was a little envy, but I love my life. I had Winnie and my career, and I was happy with that. Having Winnie was a win in his book. Thank you for that. She's a sweet, talented woman. I wouldn't tell my best friend this because he's the best cook in Caprock Canyon, but she's a fantastic chef. She pours her heart into it. You have real feelings for her. Admitting that would mean an even worse heartache later. We're friends. She has a dream, and I support that. Winnie's mom eyed him until the silence turned awkward. Denying it isn't going to make it hurt less. When Jim and I went through the divorce, I tried to deny that I still cared about him. Once your heart's involved, reason goes out the window. I'll think on that, but she comes first. As her mom, I appreciate that. As her friend, between you and me, the only reason she's so set on opening a restaurant in San Antonio is to get Jim's approval. She'll deny it until she's blue in the face. If there's one thing she has in common with him, it's his stubbornness. She'd rather eat a rusty nail than fail. Taking his hands from his pockets, he crossed his arms. That might be, but it would need to be something she decided can't build on something born from manipulation. I'd rather see her dreams come true than be the one who dashed them. Nodding, she smiled and crossed the room to the front door. Wisdom isn't a character trait easily found these days. I'll see you later, Bear. Yes, ma'am. Henrietta, please. Dropping his arms to his sides, he nodded. Henrietta. The door clicked shut as she left, and Bear faced the window again. During his chat with Henrietta, the sun had inched its way higher. He rubbed his face with his hands as his thoughts turned chaotic. It was true. His heart was most definitely involved now. He'd fallen for Winnie, but he didn't want to talk her into being with him. Spending the years wondering if she would have chosen him of her own free will would haunt him. That's not the kind of love he wanted. It's not what he wanted for her. How long would it take for the resentment to build before she left too? Angela had destroyed him when she left, and the feelings he had for Winnie went so much deeper. He wouldn't recover from her absence. His head and his heart had finally found the same page, and now they were both singing the sad notes. Bear yawned and held his chest as it turned into a cough. Yeah, he needed to lie down and grab a nap before Jim's appointment. Maybe that would help him clear his head a little more. Chapter 20 Closing her eyes, Winnie inhaled the aroma of garlic, onion, rosemary, and basil, filling her mom's kitchen. The flavors were perfectly married for the meal. She opened her eyes and stirred the squash to keep it from burning. It was more of a celebratory meal now that her dad's test results were in. It had only taken a couple of days to get them back. Her dad was given orders to reduce his stress and a prescription for blood pressure medicine. That smells divine, her mom said as she stopped in the doorway. Winnie's dad joined her mom. It sure does. It wasn't a surprise to Winnie. 
His favorite was pork loin, stuffed with cream cheese and green chilies, with roasted potatoes and pan-fried butternut squash. If he didn't love this dish, she'd take him back to the hospital for broken taste buds. As much as she loved the compliments from her parents, she was missing Bear's input. His opinion had come to matter more to her than anyone's. Have you seen Bear? Winnie asked. Last time I saw him, he was going to lie down, her dad replied. A cough drew her attention to the area behind her parents. Bear rubbed his hand over his head and stopped behind them. That really smells good. You can't go wrong with green chilies. He smiled. Winnie tilted her head, studying him. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm used to sleeping in the middle of nowhere. All these city lights are wrecking havoc with my sleep. He chuckled. Do you need any help? A timer beeped and she shook her head. Nope, that beep means it's time to eat. Once she had everything plated, her parents and Bear helped her get it to the table. I hope you guys like it, she said, taking her seat next to Bear across from her mom and dad. Winnie held her breath as her dad sliced a piece of tenderloin off and ate it. His shoulders rounded as his body melted with a moan. Oh, sweetheart, this is, this is incredible. Yeah? Her pulse quickened as she held back tears. I was hoping you'd like it. I love it, he said, slicing off another bite. Oh, it's so good. Her mom nodded. It's delicious. Is this one of the dishes you plan to serve once you open the restaurant? Shrugging, she said, I wasn't thinking so, but I might. You should. I think people would love it. It's amazing. Her dad looked at her, and for the first time in her life, it felt like he was actually seeing her for who she was, and not what he wanted her to be. You're amazing. Bear covered her hand with his and smiled. She's pretty incredible, but I think that about all of her. Lifting her gaze to Bear's, she smiled. Thank you. Then she noticed how tired his eyes looked. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine, sweetheart. He leaned closer, whispering. This is your night. Your parents are proud of you, and so am I. Not just because of your talent, but because of who you are. After that, Winnie couldn't keep the smile off her face. She'd cooked for her dad. He'd loved it, and he was proud of her. Once they were finished eating, her mom and Bear had taken on dish duty, which was their way of giving her a chance to talk with her dad alone. Joining him in the living room, she sat in a chair adjacent to his. His arms were crossed over his chest, and his gaze seemed focused on nothing in particular. Minutes ticked by, and the longer he was quiet, the more she wondered if maybe he'd said all he needed to while they were at the table. Winnie, he finally said and lifted his gaze to her. You were right, and I was wrong. She blinked, certain she'd hallucinated. What? He dropped his hands to his lap and scoffed. You heard me. I was wrong. You have an incredible talent, sweetheart. If your other dishes are anywhere near as good as the one you prepared tonight, you'll be turning people away. Really? Her pulse raced. You think so? Absolutely. I think you'd make a fine lawyer, but you are a brilliant chef. Your talent would be completely wasted if you joined me. He sat forward, covering her hand with his. The only time I want you working with me is if you're teaching me some of your recipes, especially the one for tonight. Laughing, Winnie moved from her chair and sat next to him, hugging his neck. Thank you, Dad. Until that moment, she hadn't realized just what his support would mean to her, how it would boost her confidence. But for the briefest moment, she reconsidered her desire to open a restaurant. If she didn't, there was a chance she could... But no, Bear didn't want that. She wanted more not him. Besides, the fulfillment of her dreams wasn't based on her dad's approval. She'd wanted it, needed it, but she also wouldn't give up on what she wanted. 
The thought didn't stop her heart from giving her a moment's pause. What if her dream changed? She shook the silly thought away. No, she had a goal. She knew what it was, and it was so close she could taste it. Just a couple of weeks, that's all, and she'd be cutting the ribbon and beginning what she'd worked so hard for. Walking arm in arm, Winnie and her mom had decided to take her dad home after dinner and then go for a walk. They'd invited Bear, but he'd declined, saying Winnie needed some time with her mom. You think dad will listen to the doctor? asked Winnie, unable to picture her dad taking it easy. Shaking her head, her mom exhaled sharply. No, but I'll call Uncle Clay and rat him out. Clay will make him do it if he has to strap him to a motorhome and drop him in the middle of a national forest. Clay was an adopted uncle. He wasn't related by blood, but he and her dad had been best friends since before she was born. His idea of work was Monday through Friday, unlike her dad. Yeah, dad will listen to him. I'll call your Aunt Becca, too. If there's one person that will get his attention, it's her. She practically raised him. That was true. Winnie's Aunt Becca, a redhead also, was six feet of attitude, and she wasn't one to mince words. Dad would listen to her or else. Yeah, if she finds out, he'll have no choice. They walked nearly the entire track twice, in silence, before her mom cleared her throat. It was a sign that their conversation was about to center on Winnie. I think you should tell your dad about the deal with Bear. He deserves to know. Shaking her head, Winnie said, No, I'm not telling dad about the deal. He could help with the rest of the money. You could get started on remodeling the building. She shrugged. I thought you wanted to open it as soon as possible. Winnie nodded. I do, but I still want to do this on my own. Her mom was quiet a little longer than normal. Bear is a good man. I like him. Well, I do too, but I have to finish what I started. Do you? Just because you've been doing something doesn't mean you can't stop when it isn't what you want anymore. You can be a chef without owning your own restaurant. Winnie stopped mid-stride. Are you telling me to give up? Her mom turned to her. No, I'm giving you permission to change. You had this dream when you were young. Your frontal cortex wasn't fully developed at that point. This is eight years later. Scoffing, Winnie asked, So, just drop everything I want for a guy? Absolutely not. This isn't about a guy at all. This is about you and what you want. Her mom tapped the spot above Winnie's heart with her finger. What do you really want? I have obligations. I've paid three months of rent in advance, plus a security deposit. I've ordered linens, talked to contractors and suppliers. I can't just shift gears. Winnie was almost offended her mom would even suggest her dream had changed. I won't give up. Her mom closed her eyes and pinched the bridge of her nose. You and your father are so much alike. I am not telling you to give up. She dropped her hand and lifted her head. I'm telling you it's okay if the dream changes. And that doesn't mean giving up. It means coming to the fork in the road and deciding what will make you the happiest. Opening the restaurant would make her happy. But even as the thought floated through her mind, it didn't come close to touching her heart. What made preparing the meal for Thanksgiving wasn't the food. It was the joy she saw in the family who had welcomed her like she'd always been one of them. She'd spent most of the money working to open the restaurant, though. Signed a year-long lease. She was a decision away from how she wanted the remodel to go. There were things in motion she couldn't just stop, not without spending another load of money. And then what? She'd have nothing to show for it. At this point, she'd just have to choose to be happy with the direction she was going. I am happy, Mom, she said and smiled. I really am. I like San Antonio. 
The location is perfect for foot traffic, and I can see the river walk from the front door. The restaurant that folded failed several health inspections. I won't do that. It's going to be successful. I'm confident of it. Her mom hugged her. That's all I wanted to hear. If you're happy, I'm happy. She leaned back and grinned. Bear is sure cute without that beard, isn't he? Mom, I'm married, not blind. I swear the man walked off a shoot for Cowboy Monthly. Winnie snickered. I thought the same thing. He's gorgeous. Sweet and respectful, too. Gracious, I wasn't my best self when I first met him. She hooked her arm in Winnie's and pulled her into a walk. I like him. He's incredibly sweet. Good kisser, too. Winnie's eyes went wide, realizing what she'd blurted out. Oh, is he? Uh, we were pretending to date, and he'd invited me home. It was necessary. It only happened once. No way was she telling anyone she wished it had happened way more. Her mom laughed. But you wouldn't be upset if you had to do it again. Pressing her hand to her cheek, Winnie groaned. Mom, am I wrong? No, Winnie replied, needing the topic to change. Thinking about kissing Bear wouldn't help her determination to stick to her plans. Not when she liked it so much. Anyway, let me tell you more about the location in San Antonio. As long as Winnie wasn't thinking too much about Bear, she could keep her focus on what she needed to do by honoring the obligations she'd made. Bear was a great guy, but the timing was wrong. Plus, he'd said he didn't want a commitment. Keeping to the path she'd made was the sensible thing to do, despite her heart's whisper to the contrary. Chapter 21 the ranch was a sight for sore eyes. Bear wasn't casting aspersions on Houston, but the peace and quiet of his desert oasis was missed. He and Winnie had returned the day prior, much to his relief, a week before Christmas. Without him saying a word, she'd offered to fly back to the ranch with him. He didn't need to read anything into it because she was honoring her agreement with him. When the alarm went off that morning, he'd had to drag himself out of bed, and now he was parked on a bale of hay in the feed room, worn out and exhausted. Bear? Winnie called his name. He lifted his head and smiled as she peeked into the room. Pulling his Stetson off, he ran his hand over his head. I'm dragging today. Her eyebrows knitted together as she approached him. You don't look like you feel good. I don't. Not waking up for chores. I guess I got more used to sleeping in than I thought. He held his chest as he coughed like it came from the very depths of his lungs. You don't sound like you feel good either. She palmed his forehead. You're running a fever. Shaking his head, he said, I think your hands are just cold. He pushed off the hay bale and stumbled back, hitting it with an oomph. Give me a second and I'll finish helping. The cough came again and he could feel it in his ribs. I think you should go lie down before you fall down. If I was a gambler, I'd say you picked up something from the hospital. That's the best way to get a bug. His stomach roiled and he braced his elbows on his knees. As much as I hate it, I think you're right. I don't feel so great. Let's get you inside, and I'll come back out and take care of the rest of the chores. He felt terrible, but he couldn't leave her to take on the chores all by herself. I think I can manage helping you. I'll go lie down after. Taking his face in her hands, she shook her head. No, you're going to go to bed. Whatever fight he'd half-heartedly mustered died before it could leave his lips. He hated stranding her, but the longer he sat there, the worse he felt, so he just nodded his compliance. Winnie took his hand, pulled his arm across her shoulders, and helped him stand. 
They reached the door frame, and he leaned his back against it. I need a second. He'd never been dizzier in his life, and his chest hurt. He hung his head, closing his eyes. I'm sorry. A moment later, when he said, Hey, Carolyn, Bear doesn't feel good. I need help getting him back to the house. He opened his eyes, and she was on the phone. Okay, we'll wait for them. She ended the call and slipped the phone back in her pocket. Your mom is sending your dad and Hunter to help. The only thing clear was Winnie's face. The rest of the world around him was a spinning blur. I've told you that you're beautiful, right? A tiny smile played on her lips. More than once. If you find a guy in San Antonio and he doesn't tell you that every morning when you wake up, He's not good enough for you. He covered his mouth as he coughed again. This time, he wasn't sure what hurt more, the coughing or the idea that his time with her was temporary. No one's really good enough for you, so you remember that, okay? You need to remember that. Her eyes seemed a little glassy, and she blinked. I will. Make sure your fella knows that. For the first time in a while, it felt like his heart had a clear connection to his mouth. Then again, he was sick. He was probably only thinking all this stuff and not saying it aloud. When he felt better, he'd have to remember to tell her. Brushing her hair back from her cheek, he smiled. I like how your heart shows in your eyes. It makes them greener, and they sparkle like stained glass when it's in the sun. Before he could utter another word, his dad and Hunter were there. He could barely keep his eyes open at that point. Hey, guys. I knew he wasn't feeling good. Hard-headed goat, Hunter grumbled. Those were the last words he heard before his eyes closed again and the world went dark. Chapter 22 He's rarely sick. I think maybe three times in his life. I don't know how many perfect attendance certificates he has from school. It was really annoying when I was growing up. Carrie Ann stuck a honey stick in her tea and stirred it a little. When he does catch something, it hits hard. Winnie sat in the kitchen with Molly, Carrie Ann, and Stephanie, waiting for Bear's mom and dad to give them an update. They'd called the doctor in Caprock Canyon, and he'd arrived roughly 30 minutes ago. I'd bet money he's been sick a few days and neglected to tell anyone, Carrie Ann added. That didn't surprise Winnie at all. Bear struck her as a man who would bite off his own arm to do what needed to be done. His hands weren't calloused because he let other people do things he felt responsible for. It was one of the characteristics she liked best about him and one of many reasons she was falling for him. Stephanie nodded. Yeah, if there's one character trait these West men have, it's stubbornness. It's only the amount that's different. Shrugging, Molly ran her finger over the rim of her coffee cup. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. The chatter turned to white noise as she reflected on the things Bear had said to her in the barn. Her heart made her eyes greener. Who talked like that these days? He'd said she was too good for anyone. What caught her the most was his comment about her fella. All she could think was that she didn't want another fella. Her guy was standing in front of her. It was a thought that nearly doubled her over as it socked her in the gut. Her guy. Not just good-looking, either. His heart was the draw. Of course, it didn't hurt that when he smiled, her knees went wobbly, but she was enamored with the whole package. Her heart hurt, realizing she hadn't noticed he'd been feeling bad. He would have noticed if the situation were reversed. She had no doubt about that. How had she been so oblivious that she missed that he was sick? Was she that self-absorbed that she couldn't see he didn't feel good? Bear wasn't feeling good and hadn't said a word while she busied herself with planning her restaurant. After her conversation with her mom, she'd spent a good amount of her time on the phone, 
talking to the contractor, working through follow-up with suppliers she'd previously contacted, and pouring through pages of different cutlery, linens, and dining room furniture. Well, something sure smells good, Wyatt said, as he walked into the kitchen holding Travis. The interruption was probably for the best. Any more deep thinking, and there was a good chance she'd scrap her restaurant plans, and she knew it wouldn't be right to do that to the people working on the project. They had families. They were planning on that money she'd be paying them. It's Winnie's chicken noodle soup, Molly replied. She's making it for Bear, and we talked her into making extra. Gabby followed Wyatt in, carrying a couple of pies. Wow, that smells terrific. What's that? Molly asked, eyeing the pie. Snickering, Gabby slid it onto the island. New pie I'm testing. I roasted the pecans with maple syrup and a packet of mulling spices. It smelled good, and I think the flavor is amazing. Has the doctor said anything yet? Wyatt bent, setting Travis's feet on the floor. Winnie shook her head. Not yet. I met Hunter and Josiah outside as we got here. They finished with the horses, and they're headed over to the cabins to let the ranch hands know what's going on. I really didn't mind helping with the chores. Winnie stood and walked to the soup she was cooking. Hunter and Josiah had taken over the horses for her until Bear felt better. This family continued to amaze Winnie. When they saw a need, they didn't ask if they should step in. They just did it. It didn't matter what it was. They did it without complaining. She loved it. In a way, she was envious of Bear growing up with that sort of support system. Not that her parents hadn't supported her, but most people would have at least grumbled a little. That didn't happen with the Wests and Fredericks. Talking in the hall drew the attention of everyone. Carolyn and King entered the room with the doctor, an elderly man in tow. King held up his hands. Before anyone lobs questions, Bear's okay. He waved to the doctor. Take it away, Doc. He's got the flu and bronchitis. The next few days he'll need plenty of rest and fluids, and I recommend a humidifier for warm air to help. He's running a pretty high temperature. That'll need to be monitored closely. I believe fatigue is what caused him to pass out. He smiled. I'm told he's stubborn, so I suspect he's felt bad for a couple of days. And instead of resting, he downplayed his condition. While Bear's family talked to the doctor, Winnie sneaked past them to check on Bear. As she reached his room, she paused at the door, noting he'd been changed into a t-shirt and hopefully pajama bottoms. She couldn't be certain because he was covered to the chest. His room was spacious and very much him. Warm colors, a few paintings, and a large king-sized poster bed. A recliner sat in the corner with a television mounted on the wall across from it. It was his little sanctum. As she took a breath, his scent filled her nose. Spicy aftershave and nothing else but man. With the way she was feeling, she might have to steal one of his shirts so she could sleep with it after she returned home. As her gaze fell on him again, she noticed a rag crumpled on the bed next to his shoulder. Crossing the room, she picked it up and dunked it in the bowl of icy water sitting on his nightstand. After wringing it out, she laid it across his forehead and then sat on the edge of the bed next to him. His eyes cracked open a fraction. I think I left you high and dry with the horses. Leaning across him, she braced her hand on the bed and laid her other hand against the side of his face. You can make it up to me later. That was the best response for a man like him. Telling him it was okay or she didn't mind wouldn't appease him. He kept his promises and took care of people. I wish I'd known you weren't feeling good. He opened his mouth to speak and then covered it to cough. It sounded worse now than it did before. By the time he was done, he was winded. That hurt. Shifting in the bed, he said, You should probably keep your distance from me so I don't get you sick. I'll take my chances. 
She smiled. Besides, we were probably exposed to the same things. If I was going to get sick, I probably would be by now. She leaned over him again. You know, we share a common thought. What's that? You're a solid catch, Bear West. There isn't a woman breathing that's good enough for you. I've never met a man as wonderful as you. He waved her off as his eyes slid shut. I'm not sure about that. Brushing the back of her hand along his cheek, she nodded. I am. Okay, I've got a humidifier, Carolyn announced as she walked in. There you are, Winnie. Hi, she straightened. If it's okay with you, could I stay with him? I could use that recliner sitting in the corner. I think he'd like that, his mom said, setting the humidifier on the dresser facing his bed. Turning, she walked to Winnie. He cares a great deal for you. I see it in his eyes when he's looking at you. Winnie believed that to be true, but it was the kind of affection friends shared. He's a good man. I feel wretched for not realizing he didn't feel good. Carolyn put her hand on Winnie's shoulder. Sweetheart, you were worried about your dad, and you've got a lot on your plate. He understands that. Her words didn't assuage her guilt even a little. Now that she was looking back over the last few days, he'd kept himself out of her way, deliberately allowing her the freedom to take care of things that didn't seem nearly as important now. When I asked him about his cough, he just made excuses for it. I should have noticed, though, he would have. There was no doubt in her mind that he would have. If she'd so much as sniffled too much, he would have been right there, asking if she was okay, if there was anything she needed. Not her. She'd been so caught up in her half-hearted dream that he'd fallen by the wayside. I'll go get some blankets and send the boys to move the chair closer. That way you can sit with him. Carolyn patted her shoulder and then walked to the door. I'll be back in a little bit. Winnie nodded. Okay, she replied, leaning over Bear again and pressing her lips to his hot forehead. You're causing me grief in all the right ways, Bear West. A soft snore answered her. She touched her cheek to his and closed her eyes. Her once penlight focused dream had been ripped in two. The fiery desire to make her dad proud currently stood at direct odds with a new dream, the one where she spent her years with a man she knew was irreplaceable. She was no longer just in trouble. She was swimming in it with no sign of escape. Chapter 23 Bear rolled onto his side and caught sight of the time on the alarm clock. Then his gaze fell on Winnie, sitting in his recliner, staring at something on her phone. What was she doing in his room at six in the morning? Bracing his elbow on the bed, he sat up a little. The movement caught her attention and she smiled. Hey, how are you feeling? Better. How long have you been sitting there? On and off the last two days. His mouth dropped open. Two days? She set her phone on the arm of the chair, stood and sat next to him. You were asleep for most of it. Apparently you weren't feeling good for a few days and didn't bother telling anyone. He yawned and rubbed a hand over his hair. I don't get sick a lot. It usually takes me by surprise. That's what I've been told. I didn't realize I was in the company of the poster child for perfect school attendance. She chuckled. Trust me, I wish I wasn't. You know how many times my siblings got sick? I'd have much rather stayed home, able to watch what I wanted and getting popsicles. Her eyes roamed over his face. Well, I'm just glad you're feeling better. When you passed out, it was a little scary. The last thing I remember was stepping into the barn. From there, things get hazy. He covered his mouth as he yawned again. You'd think with two days of sleeping that I'd be a little more awake than I am. Winnie shrugged. You needed the rest, and you still do. Are you hungry? I made some chicken noodle soup if you are. His stomach grumbled. 
That sounds pretty good. He moved to push the covers off and stand. Staying him, she shook her head. Nope, I'll get it and bring it to you. I can walk just fine. Besides, he needed to use the restroom, and she certainly couldn't do that for him. That's not the point. The doctor said you needed to take it easy, and that's exactly what you're going to do. It's a bowl of soup. I can manage it. She stood. I'll be back in a minute. A minute. That's all he'd need. All right. As soon as she left, he quickly tossed the covers off and ran to the restroom. Run was subjective. He mostly shuffled, and that was taxing. By the time she returned, he was back in bed. That smells really good. It had a couple of days for the flavors to marry. I always like it better when it's had time to sit. She set the bowl next to him on the nightstand. I'd give it a second. It's pretty hot. Taking her seat again in the recliner, she hung her feet over the arm. I have to say, this is a really comfortable chair. I love the thing. It's well used. He laughed. When it's just me here, I don't see the point in messing up the rest of the house. It's easier for me to just stick to my corner and keep it clean. Just as he moved to sit up a little more, a coughing spell hit. By the time it was over, he was holding his chest and wondering if it had knocked his lungs loose. This has to stop. Bronchitis with a helping of the flu. That and fatigue, or that was the doctor's thought. She looked at her phone and her eyebrows furrowed. He didn't want to pry, but she'd stayed with him this whole time. The least he could do was be a good listener for whatever was wrong. Is everything okay? Yeah, my friend who took the money called me yesterday evening, apologizing, even saying she'd return the money she hasn't spent. She's been texting me, asking if I'll ever be able to trust her again. I've typed out six different responses and erased each one because I don't know that I can. Bear tested his soup while he thought of an answer. I don't know if you can either. It took me way longer than it should to recover from Angela. Winnie looked at him. With good reason, she was horrible to you. More than you know, but at the root of it, I was responsible for letting it happen. Bear, no. We eloped to Las Vegas and got married. He'd spoken it quickly so it would actually come out. Anytime he paused, the courage would be gone, and this was a piece of himself he didn't mind Winnie having. With a gasp, Winnie's mouth dropped open. Wow. Nodding, he shrugged. Yeah, I should have known better. How could you be responsible for the way she treated you? Because I ignored red flags big enough to cover a football field? My family still doesn't know about Vegas. We'd just won the lottery, and it was seconds before I met Angela. For six months, we were inseparable. He paused, swallowing down the shame he felt. The ink was literally barely dry on the marriage certificate before her lawyer boyfriend was shaking me down for alimony. I found out later she'd known about the money all along. She'd been a temp at the lawyer's office where we set everything up after we won. As soon as we left the wedding chapel, she handed me the divorce papers, demanding half of everything I had. Alimony? I was so blind and stupid, she cried at breaking a nail literally cried. Looking back, I should have been wiser, smarter. His heart didn't break with that realization any longer. Mostly, it made him angry with himself. Of course, I hired a better lawyer. Two million dollars later, she was gone without a dime, and the marriage was an old. I'm so sorry. That had to feel awful. I'll definitely punch her in the nose if I ever see her. That's just not even a question anymore. Laughing Bear sat up with his back against the headboard and picked up the bowl of soup in one hand and the spoon in the other. It was my fault. If anyone deserves a broken nose, it's me. I don't think so. You loved someone. He shrugged. Maybe, but I definitely let her live in my head for far too long. 
and he was done giving her his life. She may have had to walk away without any of his money, but she'd gone on with her life. What had Bear done? Moped, pined, and ached for someone who used him. He'd created a prison with her as the guard. A glaring first sign with Angela should have been her cackling like a goose when he told her he was buying the ranch. When she realized he was serious, she was dumbfounded as to why anyone would want to live in the middle of nowhere. Only idiots did that. She'd spit on his dream, which was why he couldn't do that to anyone else. That was why he supported Winnie like he did. If her dream had been too far-fetched, a word of caution might have been in order, but not laughing at it. The bed moved, and he lifted his head to find Winnie sitting next to him. Well, we're friends now. I'm not the greatest at standing up for myself, but I'm a tiger when it comes to people I care about. Anyone tries that again, and the mild-mannered Winnie you know will show claws. With as fierce as she sounded, he believed it. I think I'd like to see that. He smirked, though her words echoed in his ears. We're friends now. Was that all they were? It's all they could be if he cared about her. Despite that, his heart stung from the words. Laughing, she combed her fingers through his hair and palmed his cheek. You're a great guy. One day, someone is going to love you like you've never been loved before. He didn't want to be loved by someone. He wanted to be loved by her. Why did he have to be sick? This was the part in the story where the guy kissed the girl, but not when he had bronchitis and the flu. There was also the matter of her future restaurant she'd be starting in the new year. His timing stank, like roadkill skunk. When he was no longer a danger to her health, he'd take advantage of their deal. He'd kiss her, hold her, and send her on her way. He'd put his whole heart into it. It would hurt to let her go, hurt worse than anything he'd experienced with Angela. The difference this time was that Winnie was worth the pain. Chapter 24 Sitting in Gabby and Wyatt's kitchen, Winnie boxed a pie and set it atop one that was already boxed. Wyatt and Gabby were doing things a little different this year. Instead of a simple farmer's market, they were having a Christmas festival. In order to prepare for it, she'd made quite a few pies, and they were all working on getting them ready. With Bear on the mend, Winnie felt a little less tied to the house. He'd been grounded to his room until Christmas Eve, which was the day after tomorrow, and even then he'd be taking it easy. Molly took a bite of the pie Gabby had cooked especially for her and groaned. I love you, Gabby. You love my pie, Gabby laughed. This is true, but I love you too. Rolling her eyes, Gabby said, I only made it so the other pies were safe. She bumped shoulders with Winnie as she boxed a pie. If I didn't, I would have needed a muzzle on her. Hey, of the vices I could have, pie seems to be relatively tame. Molly set her fork down, wrote the type of pie on a sticker, and then slapped it onto a box. Wyatt stopped behind Gabby, planting a kiss on her head. I love you. With that, he went on his way. The small token of affection warmed Winnie's heart. This whole family seemed to realize what they had and cherished it. That was sweet. Blushing, Gabby grinned. He does that a few times a day. I absolutely adore it. Winnie wanted that, and in the last couple of days, there was desperation attached to it, with only one person who could ease the ache. Learning that Angela had married Bear to snake his money away broke her heart. How could she have done that to him? He would have done anything for her and she threw him away like it was nothing. He thought Winnie was kidding, but she wasn't. Angela deserved a good punch to the nose. Are you still thinking about opening a restaurant? asked Carrie Ann. Uh, Gabby nodded in reply, cutting Winnie off. 
Well, Wyatt and I have talked about it. He called Bandit, and he's saying when he comes back, he doesn't really want to run it now that his mom is gone. That place is just sitting there. He said we could do what we wanted because he has no plans to reopen it at the moment. Winnie looked at Gabby confused. Wait, you're opening a restaurant here? In town, yes, but there's no concrete timetable. The festival is a test to gauge traffic. The town is reviving a little all the time. We've had great ratings on the schools this past year. If that keeps up, it'll draw people. Plus, it would be nice not to have to drive to Amarillo to go to dinner, Carrie Ann added. Gabby closed the lid on the pie she'd just placed in a box. If you don't mind, I'd love to sit down sometime and talk about what all we'd be looking at. I was thrilled when Bear said you were a chef and were opening a restaurant. Reagan chuckled. I'm sure Bear will be visiting every chance he gets so he can see you. Winnie's chest tightened. No, he wouldn't. But she'd keep that part of the lie intact. They'd agreed to not pretend. If they knew their relationship would end after the holidays, there was no way they wouldn't ask more questions. She didn't like lying to them. I certainly wouldn't mind it. Israel walked into the kitchen holding Camry. The little girl held out her arms for Carrie Ann, and she took her, kissing her face all over and making Camry giggle. Are you ready for some food? The little girl patted her chest, and Carrie Ann stood. I'm going to go lie down and feed her. I'll be back when she's done. That is, if you don't fall asleep, right? Gabby eyed her. My body is feeding a human being. I'm allowed to nap. She lightly tugged on Gabby's hair as she left the kitchen. How could Winnie have gone from knowing exactly what she wanted, where she wanted it, to wishing she had this life. Small town festivals, a slower pace of life, holding hands with Bear and loving him. The thought nearly rocked her from her seat. She loved him down to the depths of her core. They'd spent hours talking on the phone. If she knew anyone, it was him. There had been nothing to do but talk because of the distance. They'd talked about their family, kids, and all the things they thought his parents might ask about. She'd been shocked to find she had so much in common with a man she'd agreed to fake date. She still had the matter of her restaurant. Those obligations hadn't changed just because her idea of happiness had changed. Plus, Bear wasn't ready for someone new. And now that Winnie knew the whole story, she didn't blame him. That wasn't something she could force him to let go of either. Maybe she'd return to San Antonio and open the restaurant, and when they were both ready, they could pick things up again. Just because they wouldn't be dating didn't mean they had to stop talking, and for all she knew, that could be even better. More talking couldn't hurt. Maybe. There was a chance it could make her crave him even stronger. That was a hill she'd climb when she left. For now, she'd look at the positive. They were together, and they had a little over a week left to spend together. She'd focus on that and enjoy him. Chapter 25 Stepping onto the porch the next day, Bear sucked in a lungful of air like it was the most precious thing on earth. After being trapped inside, he was ready for an evening in the great outdoors. Based on the clouds gathering, the predicted white Christmas would actually happen. If not during the festival, then they'd be waking up to the ground covered in snow. Winnie's fingers tangled with his as she stopped next to him. You feel way better, huh? A lot. Plus, one more day inside and I'll go bonkers. You're lucky your mom hasn't caught you. You were supposed to be staying home and resting. If she knew you were out, she'd probably drag you by the ear back to your bed. Winnie laughed. He started to laugh with her and covered his mouth as he coughed. It's just a few hours. I can handle that. We'll take it hour by hour. She pulled her hand free and hugged him around the chest. 
I'm glad you're feeling better. Wrapping his arms around her, he set his cheek against the top of her head. Me too. They stood there, holding each other with nothing but the sounds of a few animals in the distance. This was paradise, or Bear's idea of it. Holding a woman he loved and... His heart skipped a beat at the thought. He loved Winnie. It was easy, too. He didn't have to dig for things to love about her. Her beauty went all the way to her core. She'd even returned his money now that Tammy had returned most of what was taken. There was no comparison with his feelings about anyone or anything else. He was hers, and they'd hang a wreath on his door before he ever stopped. Leaning back, he brushed his hand along her cheek and held her gaze. He slid his fingers into her hair, cupping the back of her head, and pressed his lips to hers. Soft, sweet, and supple. He loved the curve of her body and how it fit against his. Most of all, he loved the way she kissed him, burying her hands in his hair, clinging to him as if he were the only one she wanted. As he deepened the kiss, her soft moan tickled his lips. If she was even a fraction as thirsty for him as he was for her, her thirst would be unquenchable. Time could stand still for an eternity, and he'd be just as greedy for her then as he was now. Just as he thought his lungs might burst, she broke the kiss and set her forehead against his. No one's ever kissed me like that before. I've never kissed anyone like that before, he said through a straggled breath. He pulled away and coughed. Perhaps I shouldn't have kissed you. She balled her fist in the collar of his coat and pulled his lips down to hers. I'll take my chances. This time, she took charge of the kiss, and he'd never loved being bossed around so much in his life. How long they kissed, he had no idea. But when they broke away, the air was cooler, and the sun was definitely lower. I guess we should at least make an appearance at the festival. She laid her head against his chest. I did box a lot of pies. Yeah, I suppose so. They slowly untangled themselves and walked to the truck. He held the passenger door as she got in and didn't jog or even trot around the front. He walked. His head was in such a whirl that he needed the extra time to clear it enough to drive. Slipping in behind the wheel, he knew he wasn't going to be able to stay out as long as he wanted. He felt better, but his strength was already sapped. Tomorrow, he'd be staying in and learning the ways of the couch potato. You looked winded, Winnie said as she slid closer to him. Maybe we should call your mom. Nope. I need some time out of my room. One more second in there and he'd pull his hair out. He wasn't in dancing shape, but he could walk. On top of his desire for a little freedom was the surprise he'd planned. Well, he'd asked Gabby and Wyatt not to let Winnie know about the horse-drawn carriage they'd have this year. Bear knew Winnie loved them. If you don't feel good, you don't feel good. There's no reason to push yourself. Slipping his arm around her, he pulled her closer. I'll be okay. We'll walk around a little and then come back. I promise we won't stay long. She took his chin in her fingers, pressing her lips to his. No, we won't. The drive to the orchard wasn't as quick as he expected, nor were the number of cars present. It was a good thing his brother and sister-in-law planned ahead and carved out some parking for family. Otherwise, they'd have been parking in the back 40. As Bear opened the door, Winnie looked up and little flakes of snow were falling. I'm actually happy the meteorologist was right. We'll have a white Christmas. Looks like it. He put his arm around her waist, and they walked into the thick of the festival. This is the biggest it has ever been. Winnie smiled. I'm happy for them. They've put so much work into it. And seeing this turnout, it's great. She took a deep breath, and it smells divine. Yeah, the kettle corn folks are here. I love that stuff, and these guys make the best. 
I usually try to grab a bag when it's hot. That sounds good. Milling around the festival, they stopped by table after table of different goods for sale and games to play. And they took Travis to pet some of the goats a friend of Wyatt's had brought. People were tickled to see the goats dressed in pajamas. Families were taking photos of their little ones as they jumped around with the playful baby goats. It was more fun than Bear had experienced in a long time. He laughed harder, smiled wider, and it seemed the weight of his heartbreak had finally lifted. When they finally wound their way to the sleigh ride, Winnie gasped. You didn't. No, Gabby and Wyatt planned this, but I asked them to keep it a secret to surprise you. She lunged forward and grabbed him around the neck. A carriage ride through the snow. I love it. He loved her, and making her smile was the best gift he could receive. I hoped you would. Oh, I do. Once they were seated, the ride started. Winnie sat as close to him as possible, with her legs over his and her head against his shoulder, snuggled flush against him. It had turned colder since they'd arrived, and Bear was grateful there was a blanket available. It was the best way to spend time together, just soaking up the warmth of the woman he loved, enjoying her body next to his, and not worrying about the future. The ride didn't last near long enough, and it was twice as long as the guests were getting. As they got out of the carriage, his mom and dad met them. I should have known you'd be here, his mom said, eyeing him. I'm okay. We're leaving in just a few minutes. His mom wagged a finger at him. You bet you are. Have you guys not had a ride yet? Asked Bear. His dad shook his head. No, but that's all right. We're not in a hurry. It was a nice ride, so peaceful and relaxing. Winnie hugged Bear. I loved it. His parents crawled into the carriage and waved as they started their ride. We'll see you guys later, Bear's dad said. Make sure he goes home, his mom called. Bear and Winnie wandered around a little more. I love this song, Winnie mused. Now that he was paying attention, he recognized it. The Way You Love Me by Faith Hill. That's what I want. Winnie's eyebrows knitted together. What? I want a woman to love the way I love her. I want to love her to the point that all she ever sees in my eyes is how much I love her. Before Winnie could respond, Hunter and Reagan stopped in front of them. Hey guys, Reagan said. Aren't you supposed to be taking it easy, Bear? Rolling his eyes, he replied, I just got done with a long carriage ride. Winnie patted him on the shoulder. And he's going home now. I'm fine. That wasn't exactly the truth, but he wasn't falling down either. No, but that's only because you've been taking it easy. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. Do you really want to be exhausted? Reagan asked. Hunter chuckled. These two are not going to budge. Just go home, man. Winnie took Bear's hand and began pulling him in the direction of his truck. Come on, let's go. Bear grumbled, but only a little. He was tired, and Reagan was right. He didn't want to be exhausted or risk the chance of not participating in Christmas. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Before they got too far, Wyatt called to Bear. Hey, wait up. They slowed so his brother could catch up with them. What did you guys think? It's great, Bear answered. Winnie nodded. I loved the carriage ride. It was awesome. Wyatt grinned wide. That's good to hear. Uh, Gabby said she talked to you about Bandit's restaurant in town. Bear looked at Winnie. She's a good one to ask. I wanted to say thank you. We appreciate that. Having someone with hands-on knowledge is so much better. He narrowed his eyes. You ever thought about being a small-town chef? Shaking his head, Bear hugged Winnie to him. She's a chef meant for... S he stopped short. For a bigger city. Wyatt laughed. I know. I was teasing. You look tired. You should go home. That's where I was headed when you stopped us. Oh, well, then don't let me keep you. 
I'll see you tomorrow. Bear waved as he and Winnie started walking again. I almost told him about San Antonio. I don't think it would be a horrible thing being a small town chef. Oh, he'd made her feel guilty. Why did Wyatt have to say anything? Nah, you're destined for better things. You can't waste your talent in a one stoplight town such as this. Your food is way too good for that. She hugged him. Thank you. The ride home was spent with her snuggled just as close as she was during the carriage ride. Man, it was going to be hard to go back to being alone, but he'd keep that to himself. Just as they got inside the house, her phone rang. It's my mom. Go ahead, he said as he helped her out of her coat. While he shrugged out of his, she answered it. Hey, Mom. Yeah, the festival was fun. Oh, they called you? I only gave the contractor your number in case they couldn't reach me. I've had my phone the whole night. She paused. Reception can be bad out here at times. I'm surprised they were working today. But I did tell him I was shooting for the opening to happen in the earlier part of the year. Why did they call? Winnie was silent a moment. Oh yeah, that wall has to come down. It divides the room and makes it look small. Plus, a stage is going where the wall ended. No, it'll be local artists playing. I hope. Bear leaned his back against the door, his heart growing closer to the floor as she spoke. He hadn't expected anything to change, but there had been a glimmer of hope that it would. His gaze dipped to the floor as his thoughts wandered down rocky paths. Bear? He lifted his head and their eyes locked. I'm sorry, I was trying not to listen. It's okay, it was just the contractors. They'd tried to reach me and had called my mom. She'd been trying to reach me for a while. I told her I'd send them an email before I went to bed. They won't be starting until after the new year anyway, but communication is key at this stage. You're right. He smiled. That's why I know your restaurant will do great. You've got a good head on your shoulders. Hugging herself, she took a deep breath. I hope so. Well, how about I walk you to your room and we'll call it a night? I don't want to, but I'm actually a little tired. She closed the distance between them, lifted slightly, and kissed him. How about I walk you to your room? Instead of waiting for him to answer, she kissed him again and took his hand, leading him through the house to his room. Standing at his door, he said, This isn't the gentlemanly thing to do. Holding his gaze, she touched her fingertips to his temple, ran them down his jaw, and cupped his cheek, an intimate gesture that made his skin tingle. Maybe, but it's the thing to do when you care about someone, and at this moment, you're the one needing the extra care. You were really sick for a couple of days. Pressing his face into her hand, he said, I'm sorry if I made you worry. I don't mind worrying about you, she said, hugging him around the neck and kissing the side of his face. Get some sleep, and I'll see you in the morning. Reagan and I are going to try to replicate Bandit's cinnamon rolls, and we're going to start early to make test batches in the hopes of pulling it off. Bear buried his face in her neck and breathed her in. Thank you for spending the evening with me. She leaned back. I think I should be saying that to you. It was fun, and I loved the carriage ride. It was fun. He covered his mouth as he yawned. Man, I haven't been this tired in a while. Pulling free, she stepped back and smiled. I'll see you in the morning. Night. Bear stepped inside his room, and the weight of the evening touched his shoulders like they'd been waiting all evening for him to get home. He wasn't just tired, he was heartsick. It wasn't fair to Winnie to feel that way, but he did. What would she say if he asked her to stay? How would he feel if someone did that to him? He'd hate it. He couldn't do that to Winnie. He just couldn't. Even if she did say yes, there would always be the what-if floating over their heads. Every argument would have that elephant in the room. That's not the kind of relationship he wanted. In a little more than a week, she'd be on a plane. He'd love her mind, body, and soul until then, and then he'd love her from afar. 
that was the right thing to do. If she ever wanted to return, he'd welcome her with open arms and every inch of his heart. He'd just let that hope simmer in the background and be happy with what he had. Chapter 26 Cinnamon, nutmeg, and hints of orange filled the kitchen, but that was about the only thing Winnie was aware of. She was present in body, but her mind was on the evening before. It had kept her awake long into the night. I want a woman to love the way I love her. I want to love her to the point that all she ever sees in my eyes is how much I love her. Perhaps the most romantic thing Winnie had ever heard, and he'd said it as he looked at her. At first, she thought he was really speaking to her, but she'd read too much into it. She'd even wondered aloud that she didn't think it would be bad to stay in Caprock Canyon. But he'd been sweet and let her down easy. He wanted her to go back to San Antonio because he wasn't ready for something more serious than the temporary relationship they had. Her heart had physically ached for hours after, but it was okay. She'd use the time to draft an email detailing the things she wanted the contractor to do. Then she'd spent some time with the floor plan and finding the best table and chairs to fit the type of atmosphere she was looking for. In all, everything was coming along well. The smell of dough burning broke through her thoughts, and she hurried to pull the rolls out of the oven. When was the last time she'd burned anything? She needed to pay attention, or there'd be no rolls later. She set them on top of the oven and groaned. Oh, they're ruined. Reagan ran into the kitchen and slid to a stop, and her eyes widened. What happened? I was distracted. I'm sorry. Winnie sighed and hung her head. It's just dough. We'll make some more. Reagan picked up the bowl they'd washed and set aside to dry. I make these almost every morning. It's really not that big of a deal to make some more. Winnie used the spatula and tried to find even one cinnamon roll she could taste test. In the middle, under all the charred edges, was a soft piece that didn't look too bad. She pinched off a piece and tried it. Oh, this isn't too bad. She pinched off another piece and offered it to Reagan. No, I think that's perfect. Reagan looked at the notes from the last batch. I think we've got it. All we have to do now is bake some tonight. She held up her hand to give Winnie a high five. Winnie tapped her palm against Reagan's and laughed. Whew. Look at it this way. We won't be too sick to enjoy them tonight. A few more of these things and I would have been done. Me too. What is that smell? asked King as he walked into the kitchen to refill his coffee mug. Winnie raised her hand. I kind of got distracted and the last batch of rolls burned. Well, better now than later, I guess. He walked to Reagan, giving her a one-arm hug and then did the same to Winnie. We appreciate the two of you doing this. Winnie really loved this family. She could see King in bear. The way his dad treated Carolyn was sweet and loving. It was like they were kids most of the time. You're welcome, Winnie said. I'm just sorry the house smells like burned bread. Ah, uh, it'll clear out soon enough. He set his mug down. You two go have some coffee and relax. I'll clean up. Reagan smiled. Oh, you don't have to do that. I know. And I wouldn't offer if I didn't want to. Now, shoo, I've got this. Grabbing a cup from the cabinet, Reagan filled it with coffee and handed it to Winnie. Want to sit outside a little while? Enjoy the snow? Sure. Are you going to have some coffee, Reagan? Asked King. Waving him off, she said, No, I'm good. A tiny smile lifted one corner of his mouth. All right. On the way out, they put on their coats and then parked themselves each in a chair on the front porch. 
The smell of snow in the air coupled with the hot coffee was heavenly. This is nice, Winnie looked at Reagan, and it was fun cooking with you. You are seriously talented, girl. That idea to add the little bit of orange peel was brilliant. I would never have thought of that because I don't even really taste the orange in it. But that's exactly what was missing. Well, your coffee could run circles around mine, and I thought mine was good. Winnie chuckled and took a sip of her coffee. So, so good. Reagan grinned and shrugged. Thanks. As they drank their coffee, silence fell over them, and Winnie's thoughts traveled to Bear yet again. She wished she could talk to someone. Her mom and dad had never wholeheartedly supported her desire for a restaurant. Besides, she already knew what her mom would say. Plus, she knew Reagan and Hunter's history. If anyone could understand, it would be Reagan. Reagan, can I talk to you? Will you promise not to say anything to anyone? She pulled her knees to her chest and nodded. Well, sure. I won't tell a soul. What's wrong? Winnie's pulse jumped. Now that she'd asked, she wasn't so sure she wanted to talk anymore. Oh, never mind. It's okay. Shaking her head, Reagan replied. Uh, no. Spill. It won't go anywhere. I am in love with Bear to the point that it hurts to even think of not being with him. Pulling her blanket tighter, Reagan shrugged. Then be with him. Is someone saying you can't? Before Winnie could chicken out, she closed her eyes and gave Reagan the whole story. From meeting Bear in Lubbock to their long into the night talks to flying into Amarillo. All of it, and as fast as she could. A snicker caught Winnie off guard, and her eyes popped open. It's not funny. No, but I understand why you wanted to tell me. I'm what you call uniquely qualified to help with this. She took a deep breath and smiled. It's really hard to believe he did that. He was positively furious when Carrie Ann put him on that dating website. Using it to hire a girlfriend? Wow. Now it was Winnie's turn to laugh. He'd not told her that. I can actually see her doing that. Reagan laughed a little harder. They finally settled it last year in the middle of Christmas Day. She apologized, he forgave her, and then he told her to tell the family she was pregnant. It was a sweet moment. That sounded very bearish. He's such a good man. They all are, and they get it from their dad. I adore King. He knew we were faking the engagement and never said a word out loud about it. Even Carolyn knew. Reagan groaned, and she nailed me on the way to Lubbock to shop. I'd never felt more like a deer in headlights in my life. They're pretty intuitive. Do you think they suspect me and Bear? Shaking her head, Reagan replied, No, but you guys haven't been faking anything. Winnie chewed her bottom lip. I don't think I have. We talked for hours on the phone before I came here, almost every night. I think I've loved him for a while now. I just haven't wanted to admit it. Reagan twisted in the chair to face Winnie. Hunter told me what happened to Bear. It was awful. And since then, he's been shut off from the world. He said he wasn't ready for a relationship. Should I tell him I love him? That I don't want to leave him? That I choose him? No. Tilting her head, Winnie asked. Why? It took a moment before Reagan responded. I think he's using your dream as a way to protect himself. He probably doesn't even realize it, but he needs to ask you to stay. He needs to be willing to risk his heart again. That actually makes sense. Angela really hurt him. Winnie wouldn't divulge the extent. That part of the story wasn't for repeating. So, do I make a big push that I really want to go back? Reagan shook her head. No, don't make a big deal of it at all, or he really will think you want to go. 
Just keep going as you are and know that it could take him a while to wake up. You may have to return to San Antonio before he realizes it. I think you might be right. It hurt acknowledging it. What if he never does? Then you move on because he'll never fully love you like he should. Move on? Just the idea crushed Winnie. How could she move on from Bear? The way he kissed her? How safe she felt in his arms, the way he cared for her. There wasn't another man who could ever take his place. Reagan covered Winnie's hand with her own. I know what you're thinking, but it would be better to find someone willing to risk it all for you than a man who's still holding on to someone else. Yeah, Winnie had to admit Reagan was right. She didn't want Bear hanging on to the past while trying to build a future with her. They both needed to be walking in the same direction. Thank you. You're welcome, she grinned. For what it's worth, you'd be an awesome sister-in-law. Winnie gripped Reagan's hand and squeezed it. I feel the same way. Now she only had to hope Bear would ask her to stay. She loved him, wanted him, but he had to want her too. Winnie wasn't going to settle for anything less than all of him. Chapter 27 The cinnamon rolls turned out just as good, or even better than bandits. Winnie and Reagan teaming up had delivered the softest, tastiest rolls Bear had tried in a long time, and that was saying something since he'd never thought anyone could beat his best friend. At some point during their Christmas Eve tradition, someone had hung mistletoe in almost every doorway. It was a rotten trick because he loved kissing Winnie, and that was making it harder and harder to picture his life without her. With kids in the mix, the traditions grew longer each year. This year was the liveliest bear had ever seen. Bouncing Travis on his knee, he pointed to a spot on the tree. That small one next to the popsicle stick picture frame is for Winnie. His mom plucked it from the tree, crossed the room, and handed it to Winnie. What could you have gotten me that fits in this tiny little box? Winnie asked. He'd purposefully been careful about the box. No velveteen or anything that remotely looked like a ring box. He didn't need anyone getting the wrong idea. Not that he hadn't considered it but she needed to go home. She swiftly peeled the wrapping paper off and lifted the top of the box. A gift card for a new knife set? I know the set you got when you arrived wasn't the best. You were trying to save money. This way, you can pick the best. The research I did said you need to handle them to know how they feel. And that store has the most knives in stock that will allow you to do that. The store was in Houston, but Bear figured since her family lived there, it wouldn't be a chore to visit and pick out her knives. Leaning over, she kissed him. Thank you. This is really sweet. You're welcome, he smiled. Reagan stood and retrieved a small gift, handing it to Bear's dad. It's been done before, but I think you'll like it. His dad lifted an eyebrow and slowly tore the paper off. What could? His mouth dropped open, and he tilted it so Bear's mom could see it. She squealed and touched her hands to her cheeks. Really? The cheesy grin Hunter flashed her gave the gift away. Another baby was coming. Envy bubbled in Bear's chest, but he pushed it away. Taking happiness from someone else wouldn't make him happier. Bear's mom stood and hugged Reagan. Oh, sweetie, I'm thrilled for you. I'm six months. Reagan brushed tears away. Because of my endometriosis, we wanted to wait to announce it until I was a little further along. I'm seeing a high-risk specialist, and she's pretty confident I'll carry to term now. Daddy and I will be there in February to help, okay? She hugged Reagan again. Do you know if it's a boy or a girl? Or are you waiting to find out? Girl, Joanna Kathleen. Her middle name is my grandma's middle name. She looked over her shoulder at Hunter. 
We thought naming her Joanna in memory of Grandma Jo was appropriate, since I'm wearing one of her rings. His mom kissed Reagan on the cheek. I love it. His dad stood, smiling as he hugged Reagan. I had a suspicion you were. Reagan's mouth dropped open. What? How? You haven't been drinking coffee. That's what tipped you off? He nodded. I'm old, but I'm still keen enough to pick up on things like that. He hugged her again. Congratulations, sweetheart. You're going to be a fantastic mama. Bear continued to hold Travis, and the overwhelming need to have what his siblings had dug its way into his chest. He wanted love and a family. The thought to ask Winnie to stay floated to mind, this time stronger than it had ever felt. Then he looked at her, and his heart folded in on itself like it was origami paper. What if he asked and she said no? Could he handle that? He wanted to emphatically say yes, but he couldn't. He didn't want to be hurt like that again, and it would be a heap worse this time. She dreamed of being a chef, had the location, contractors, all of it. Why would she give all that up for him? No, he couldn't risk that. Besides, he wanted her to have the things she dreamed of, even if that dream didn't include him. Hunter stopped in front of Bear and handed him a gift before leaving the room. From Winnie. Bear side-eyed her and smiled. Now what on earth could you have gotten me? She shrugged. Guess you'll have to open it and find out. He put his cheek next to Travis's. You want to help Uncle Bear open it? His nephew giggled, touched Bear's face, and said, Hep! It was two-year-old for yes. Travis pulled at the paper, and with Bear's help, they unwrapped it. Puppy training lessons? Winnie! His heart swelled. You didn't. I had a little help from Hunter. She smiled as she looked at Bear's brother. I would have picked the cutest one and not thought about behavior or anything. He'd only mentioned in passing that he wanted a dog, that he'd get one when the ranch was running smoothly, but he'd not had the time to even think about getting one. Hunter returned and a squirming Australian shepherd was in his arms. The puppy licked Hunter on the face and Hunter tried to stop him. He comes from quality, competitive herding lines. He's food motivated, and I've already got him to sit a little. We asked Captain's breeder to find us a good one. Bear took the puppy as Hunter took Travis. Hey, little fella. The puppy licked his face and his whole body moved as he wagged his tail. He's cute. Putting his arm around Winnie, Bear kissed her. Thank you, and thank you, Hunter, for helping her. Reagan helped with the temperament testing. She hired a professional trainer to do it. When did you manage to get him? Bear asked. Josiah picked him up at the airport yesterday. Molly sucked in a sharp breath. Is that where you went? Shrugging, Josiah said. I had to keep it a secret because I was picking up your present. My present? A grin spread on his face. Tomorrow. She narrowed one eye. Josiah, just wait until tomorrow. He picked Ellie up and set her on her feet. We're not telling mommy, are we? He raspberried her neck and she giggled, grabbing his cheeks and babbling. The only thing missing for Bear was his best friend. He leaned over. Would you mind taking, I don't have a name for him yet. I want to call Bandit, wish him a Merry Christmas and just talk a minute. Taking the puppy, Winnie nodded. He probably needs to use the restroom. I'll do that while you call Bandit. Take your time. Thank you, sweetheart. Standing, he wove his way through the living room and into his room before dialing Bandit's number. It rang a few times before he picked up, and when he did, it was noisy. Hey, bear. I hope I'm not interrupting, but I wanted to call and wish you a Merry Christmas. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> How about you? It struck Bear as interesting that Bandit wasn't stuttering as much. 
Most of the time, it correlated to how nervous he was. Whatever was going on must be okay. Bear crossed the room and sat in his recliner. I'm okay, too. I'm getting a little crowded around here. A few more kids and we'll be back to spilling drinks and laps and elbowing ribs in no time. Bandit laughed. I kind of miss that. Me, too. Reagan's six months along. Give her a hug and a k- k- kiss from me. Tell her I think she'll be a great mom. I miss everyone. We've missed you this year. It sure isn't the same. Yeah, it ain't no one roping me into doing things. Chuckling, Bear shook his head. That's for sure. The line was quiet a moment, and Bear debated whether to tell Bandit what he was in the middle of. You got a second? I have more than one for you. Bandit paused. Whoa, what's going on? Bear sat forward, raked his hand through his hair, and spilled his guts. By the time he was done with his tail, he felt a hundred pounds lighter. He didn't realize how much he needed to tell someone. Bandit whistled. Sounds like quite the predicament. Do you think she has feelings for you? With the way Winnie kissed Bear, he thought she did. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, it seems so, but she's got this dream. Remember when I told Angela about mine? I don't want to do that to her. Maybe it wouldn't be the same. You should probably talk to her. That was the easy way to do things. And again, putting his heart out there, risking a no. His chest tightened to the point he couldn't breathe just thinking about it. I know I should, but I can't. I just can't. And I don't know how to climb over that mountain. Bandit was quiet a moment. Well, until you can... You need to let her go. It's not fair to her to ask her to choose you when you don't trust her enough to even ask. I'll say this, though. If you do love her, figure it out quick, because if she's half the woman you think she is, she's worth the risk. That was a lot to chew. Bear sighed. Yeah, seems I've got plenty to think on. Sounds like it. Someone in the background called Bandit's name. Uh, hey, I don't m- mean to cut this short, but my grandfather has people over. I need to go. It's all right. Thanks for the advice. They exchanged goodbyes and ended the call. Bear sat there a second, mulling over his conversation with his best friend. There was plenty of wisdom in what he was saying. Bear just needed to figure out how to apply it, if he could. He stood, slipping his phone back into his pocket and walked to the door. Just as he stepped out, Winnie was turning the corner. He could just as easily see her holding a baby instead of a puppy. The thought made him ache. If he couldn't even trust her with his heart, he had no business even thinking about things like that. Hey, he did great, she said, handing the puppy to Bear. He's a funny little thing. Full of vim and vigor, too. Little guy loves to run. Bear scratched the puppy behind the ear. I just have to figure out a name. You have a horse named Spur. You could call him Boots. She grinned. You don't have to. It's just a silly suggestion. Actually, I like that. He looked down at the puppy. What do you think of Boots? The puppy yipped at him and licked his face. Winnie shrugged. Seems like a yes to me. Bear nodded, putting his arm around her and kissed her. Then I guess he's got a name. This has been more fun than I've ever had. The smallest gift tradition is just cute and fun. Although the puppy wasn't exactly the smallest gift because of flight availability and Josiah's trip to Amarillo. She snuggled against Bear. Plus, hiding a puppy for a day was hard enough. He's perfect. Thank you. He smiled. Ready to rejoin the madness? Yeah. As they walked together, Bear pushed away the doubts and fears. In a little more than a week, he'd be saying goodbye to her, and he wanted to treasure his time with her without those things hanging over them. Maybe by then, he would have enough time to think about Bandit's words and find the courage to give her his heart.
Chapter 28 Running out of the bathroom, Winnie grabbed her phone and answered it. Merry Christmas! That is not fair, Winifred Fordham, her mom grumbled. You have to at least say hello first. It was a yearly contest. Whoever said Merry Christmas first had gloating rights until the next year. Winnie had lost every year, and she decided this year she wasn't going to lose. There are no rules that say I have to start with hello. Her mom scoffed. I say hello every time. Snickering, Winnie crawled onto the bed, hair in a towel and one wrapped around her. Just because you do it doesn't make it a rule. Fine. Merry Christmas, my love. Next year, I want us to have Christmas together, okay? Her mom wanted Christmas together? You do? Of course, Christmas had been a family affair when she was growing up. But once she moved out and away for college, over time, they'd gone their separate ways for Christmas. They called each other and sent gifts or whatnot, but it wasn't the big holiday deal most people had. Your father's mild stroke was a bit of a wake-up call for me. I don't want to waste the years I have by not spending time with the people I love. I don't want to regret anything when I'm old. Er. Nodding, Winnie said. I'd like that. She filled her mom in on the West Frederick Christmas Eve tradition. It had been so much fun the night before. Eating cinnamon rolls, drinking hot cocoa, and opening the smallest gifts. The story behind the tradition made it even more fun. Winnie could absolutely see Josiah trying to cheat the system for a bigger gift. Bear loved the puppy. At first, she'd been a little afraid of getting him one, but she'd talked it over with Wyatt, and he'd given her the green light. They'd all helped her make it happen. She'd used some of the money Tammy returned. It was worth every penny to see his eyes light up and the smile that encompassed his entire face. When she'd returned from letting Boots potty, she'd gone to Bear's room. It had taken the puppy a while to get some energy out and then get him to go. She figured he'd had enough time to talk to Bandit, but realized the conversation wasn't over. She wasn't completely sure what he'd talked to Bandit about, but from what she overheard, she had an intuition that said Bear was hesitant to trust her. With what happened with Angela, it wasn't a shock, but it had cut her a little. It also made Reagan's advice that much easier to use. Winnie loved Bear. She'd choose him, but until he decided he could trust her, she wasn't willing to stay. What she'd decided was to honor their deal. She'd kiss him, snuggle him, and love on him. When it came time to fly home, she'd do it. She wanted more than just a piece of him, because once she gave herself to him, it would be her whole self. She'd be his, and she deserved the same. Maybe Bear's family wouldn't mind a few intruders next year. Her mom used the tone that meant there was something between the lines. You think they'd be okay with that? I'm sure they'd be fine with it. I'm just not sure I'll be in the picture. He's not ready for a relationship just yet, and until he is, it can't go anywhere. I don't mind trying to fix broken things, but when they're doing everything in their power to keep the glue from sticking, I need to walk away. Her mom inhaled and let it out slowly. I'm proud of you. You have a sweet nature and giving heart. It's time you stopped being a doormat. Tammy called and apologized, even returned most of the money, and asked if I could ever forgive her. What did you say? I said that I forgave her, but the trust was gone, that this restaurant venture would continue without her. I can't put myself in that position again. I won't. I have value. I'm worth something. Sniffing, her mom replied, Yes, you are. Do you have any idea how long I've waited for you to figure that out? Winnie shrugged. Believe it or not, Bear taught me that. He's a good man, 
sweet and kind. But you're right, until he can trust you, it'll never work. A loud noise downstairs made Winnie jump, and she looked at the time. Oh, I need to go. I think they're about to start opening gifts. I have to get the sweet potato casserole in the oven. Merry Christmas, baby. The phone rustled. Merry Christmas, sweetheart, her stepdad said. I'm sorry I've been away so long. It's okay, Gary. Merry Christmas. Another round of southern goodbyes, and ten minutes later, she was hurriedly dressing to get downstairs. As she hit the first floor landing, she slammed into Bear. Whoa, I've got the casserole in the oven. Really? She sighed heavily. Yep, an hour, right? Yeah, thank you. My mom called and I wasn't paying attention to the time. She blew a piece of hair from her face. Then my stepdad got on the phone, and you know how Texan goodbyes are. They just keep going. Bear chuckled. I know, they take a while. Is that apple cider I'm smelling? Yeah, Reagan was craving it, so my dad made it. It's pretty good. Reagan was right. King had to be one of her most favorite people. Not that they weren't all great. That man just had a way of making people feel like family. I really like your family. I was so nervous the day I flew in, but I've never felt more welcome in my life. Wrapping his arms around her, Bear kissed her forehead and then set his cheek on top of her head. It's been nice having you here. She wanted to say, but you can't trust me. Instead, she swallowed down the words, hugged him, and replied, I've liked being here. He wasn't being cruel or mean, not even selfish. It was scary to love it all, and even scarier when he'd been hurt so badly. It had nothing to do with Winnie or her behavior. All of his fear rested on him. She couldn't promise them away. Her love wouldn't change him. That was something he'd have to do on his own. You ready to join the festivities? He asked. Yeah, I am. She dropped her arms to her sides as he loosened his hold on her. Before she could move, he took her face in his hands and kissed her the toe-curling, unhurried kisses she loved. They shorted her wiring and made her hold on to him. There was part of her that wanted to accept whatever she could get of him, but she couldn't. It wasn't good for her, and ultimately, it wasn't good for him. The kisses, though, there wasn't a chance she was turning down those. His hands roamed from her face to her back, bringing her flush to his body. She was sure people were waiting on them, and she didn't care. It was Christmas, and as far as presents went, this was the best. He broke the kiss and held her gaze. Now I'm ready. Uh Uh-huh. That was about as much as she could say with the brain power she had left. For a split second, she was saddened by the thought this might be her only Christmas with him. But in the next breath, she was grateful. He'd taught her something valuable. She wanted to love the way a man loved her. Anything less wasn't good enough anymore. Chapter 29 Over the week following Christmas, Bear had slowly pulled away. And in the process, Winnie had as well. They were still acting as though things were fine, but time alone was mostly spent in awkward silence. She hated how it felt between them, but she also understood that the only person who could help Bear was Bear. Standing outside, it was bitterly cold, and she was thankful that she'd bought a sweater and coat during the Black Friday madness. They were the only reason she wasn't frozen. The minutes were ticking down until the new year would begin, and she was excited to see the fireworks. From what she understood, they rivaled the best show there was. Reagan sidled up next to her. Hey, how are you doing? Winnie and Reagan had become good friends since Winnie divulged her arrangement with Bear. It was the first time Winnie had a friend she was positive she could trust. Someone who wasn't broken or looking to her for repair. 
For once, she was the one being pieced back together. Taking a deep breath, she answered, I'm okay. I think I've come to terms with the way things are being left. I don't know that I'll ever stop loving him, but I love myself enough now to know settling won't do this time. Patting her back, Reagan smiled. Wise words. She hugged Winnie. But whatever happens with you and Bear, you'd better keep in touch with me. I have this incredible little bed and breakfast with the best ocean view in Georgia. I've got a room with your name on it. Winnie hugged her back. Oh, I will so take you up on that. Reagan dropped her arms to her side and stepped back. I'm going in the house to make a pickle and mayo sandwich. Do you want anything? Uh, no, I'm good. That sounds disgusting. It does, but my mouth is literally watering at the thought. I've craved things that normally would have me bent over a toilet. Reagan laughed. Even Captain looks at me strangely at times, like, my human is officially broken. Winnie held her stomach as she giggled. Dogs are pretty smart. As if she'd called him, Boots ran up to Winnie and jumped up and down, begging to be loved. Winnie swooped him up and scratched his head. He is too cute. Petting Boots on the head, Reagan said, Okay, be back in a minute. Where is your person? Winnie asked Boots. I'm right here. Bear smiled as he joined her. I'm trying to decide if I should let him stay for the fireworks later or take him inside. He needs to get used to loud noises. Sometimes we have to take care of predators. Winnie handed Boots to Bear. Maybe keep him out here then. Hunter stopped in front of them. You look a little tired, man. Fun fact about puppies, they have bladders the size of a walnut. I think he woke up four times last night. Boots whined to be put down, wiggling in Bear's arms to the point that he was nearly dropped. All right. Bear set him down. Play, bud. Maybe you'll sleep tonight. Hunter laughed as the puppy bolted away. He's a spunky little thing, but Captain was too. I think that's just puppy. Plus, this is all new to him. I love him. He slept right next to me the whole week. As soon as he whimpers, I take him out and he goes. He's a good little pup. Smart, too. Bear set his hands on his hips as he watched Boots zip around. Winnie was happy she'd found the little guy, and even more she was thankful for Wyatt, Hunter, Reagan, and Josiah's help in making his gift happen. With a kiss to the cheek, Bear said, Thank you again. I really love him. You're welcome. She hugged herself. There was no way his family didn't see the cooling off that had happened the past week. They'd gone from happy and smiling to barely speaking unless they were around other people. Hunter looked around. Have you seen Reagan? She went inside to make a mayo and pickle sandwich. Winnie tried not to actually picture the nasty thing. Both the men's lips twisted in disgust. What? Bear asked. Hunter shook his head. She's been craving the weirdest stuff. She had tuna with ketchup one night. She made chili. It was absolutely delicious. And then she squirted enough mustard in hers that I had to go outside to eat mine. Bear grimaced. That's bad. It is, but... He said and smiled. I love her, tuna and ketchup breath included. I felt the baby kick last night. She's been pretty calm. Last night, she was doing gymnastics. That's great. I knew she was pregnant, knew there was a child, but man, last night... Hunter stopped as his voice caught. It hit me that I was going to be a dad. The person I love most in the world has given me a gift I can't properly put into words. Winnie shivered as a breeze blew through, and Bear put his arms around her. When she looked up at him, his expression was unreadable. Finally, his lips quirked up. I'm happy for you, Hunter. I'm gonna go find Reagan. See you guys in a bit. So far, Winnie had yet to shed tears, but she had a suspicion that they'd flow freely once she got on the plane. 
Leaving a man she desperately and hopelessly loved hurt her in ways she'd yet to ever experience. In that moment, as she watched Bear, she decided that however things played out, the one thing she wanted most was to be held by him one more time. Wrapping her arms around his chest, she laid her head against him and took a deep breath. Thank you for inviting me to spend Christmas here. I've really had a great time. He squeezed her a little. I'm glad you came. It wouldn't have been as wonderful if you weren't here. You made the holidays bearable. He laughed. I'm going to miss you. She'd never spoken truer words. You'll have to come visit me in San Antonio after the restaurant opens. Nodding, he said. I definitely will. The people of San Antonio won't know what hit them. You're going to blow them away and be incredibly successful. Bear was complimenting her, but it felt like daggers to her heart. She kissed him and silently hoped that one day he'd break free and be truly happy. He was a good man, and when he did finally decide to give his whole heart to someone, they were going to be loved like no one else. Maybe it would even be her. But if not, whoever she was, Winnie hoped she'd love Bear in return as much as Winnie did. He deserved nothing less. Chapter 30 The ride to the airport was spent in uncomfortable silence. Bear's entire essence was in turmoil. He'd pulled away from Winnie after his talk with Bandit. Not because he didn't love her but because he knew she deserved better than his scraps. It wasn't fair to her that he was still afraid. Standing back from the ticket counter, he waited as she checked her luggage in and got her boarding ticket. His head was screaming so loud he could barely hear the noise of the crowded airport. Slinging her backpack over her shoulder, Winnie approached him and stopped about a foot away. All checked in. Did you tell them they lost your luggage last time and they need to be extra careful this time? No, she's just an employee. Besides, I replaced the stuff with nicer clothes, and this great guy bought me new knives. I'll miss my old ones, but I'll treasure these just as much. She smiled. He gathered her into a hug and held on, soaking her up. Her arms circled his chest, and she lightly squeezed him. Heartbeat after strangled heartbeat passed, until he dropped his arms and stepped back. Have a good flight. Thanks. It was a war of words between his head and his heart, as he watched her wind her way through the line to security. When she disappeared from sight, he strode out of the airport and stopped outside, bracing his hand against the wall. His chest felt like it was going to implode. There's only one thing on this earth that will make a man look like the world is ending, and that's a woman. An elderly male voice broke through the collision going on inside of him. Bear looked up. The man wagged his finger at him. Go get her before you regret it, because you will, and you know you will. Go. Nodding, Bear pushed off the wall and briskly walked to the ticket counter. The only way to get to her was to buy a ticket. The woman at the counter smiled. Reservation number? I don't have one. I just need a ticket. It doesn't matter where. I just need to talk to someone. Okay, she said, her fingernails tapping against the keyboard. I've got Amarillo to Vegas leaving in two hours. Of all the destinations. I'll take it. The woman's eyebrows furrowed. You don't even know the price. There isn't one. She's priceless. He pulled out his wallet and slapped his card down. Oh. A few moments later, he was weaving through the security line. If he'd known he was buying a plane ticket, he would have worn something besides boots. By the time he passed the security checkpoint, Winnie's flight was being announced. Grabbing his boots, he took off at a run hoping he wasn't too late. He slid to a stop as Winnie came into view, walking away from the gate she was supposed to be at, her hand rubbing her eyes as tears trickled down her cheeks. Winnie, 
he called, ignoring the people who stared. She looked up and tilted her head. Bear? He charged forward and dropped his boots. I've spent the last week trying to convince myself that letting you go was the best thing to do, that you shouldn't have to give up your dream, that making you choose would be wrong. But I've fallen in love with you. I think I will wither and die if I let you leave without asking you to stay. Stay? I'm begging you to pick me. I know you have a dream. I know you do. But I will give up the ranch. I will give up my heart. I will give all I am to you. You can have all of me for as long as you want. Just pick me, please. You would? I would. He swiped at the moisture on his face. I'd rather risk it all with you than live the milk toast existence I've been living. I want you. I want to spend my life with you, have children with you. My foreseeable future is mapped out with you as the captain. Please stay. He paused. I'll understand if you can't, but I had... Winnie threw her arms around her neck and kissed him. I choose you. I want you. I was already on my way back. The closer I got to the gate, the sicker I got. I was trying to be strong. I was trying to walk away. I just couldn't. The thought of not being with you was killing me. I'd rather have just pieces of you than nothing at all. I choose you, Bear West, with all my heart. Yeah? Yeah, she nodded. Yeah, always and forever. Always and forever. You've got it. He brought his lips to hers, and they'd never tasted sweeter. The woman in his arms was worth everything to him. Even if she'd chosen to leave, the purest form of peace he'd had was deciding to fight for her. Fear had nearly crippled him and let her slip away. Sounds of cheers and clapping broke their kiss, and they looked around at the crowd that had gathered to watch them. He set his forehead against hers. I love you, Winnie. I love you. She balled her fists in his collar and kissed him. I have a ticket to Vegas. What? She laughed. It was the only flight that could get me past security. He chuckled and dropped to one knee. I don't want to go to Vegas, but I'd be the happiest person on the planet if you'd marry me. He pulled a ring from the pocket inside his coat. But you were letting me leave. My dad stopped me before we left and handed it to me. He said if I came home without you wearing it, he'd take it as a sign that he needed to kick some sense into me. She nodded. I love that man. So will you? Will you marry me, Winnie? Absolutely, and the sooner the better, she smiled. As Bear stood, he slipped the ring onto her finger. I like the way your mind works. He winked, wrapped his arms around her, and kissed her like the world wasn't watching. He had his girl. Wherever that landed him, he'd call it home. He'd traded an old dream for a new one. Life with Winnie was a dream that gave him joy and purpose a risk that no longer felt all that risky. Epilogue. Six months later. It's your show, sweetheart. Ready when you are. Bear stood behind Winnie, arms around her middle, and kissed her cheek. The ribbon cutting would tell the world that all her dreams had come true. She'd married Bear in the small Caprock Canyon church a little more than three months after he proposed. It was the best day of her life, exchanging I do's with him. He loved her enough to give up everything, and she loved him enough not to let him. The funniest thing about the entire day was getting a call that the airline had finally found her missing luggage, and she could expect it in a couple of days. Her dream of opening a restaurant hadn't changed, except for the location. After Natalie bought her out of the San Antonio location, She'd teamed up with Gabby to open the one that had belonged to Bandit. Winnie would be doing the entrees, and Gabby would be doing dessert. It gave them both what they wanted without giving Gabby added work, since Winnie would be taking charge of the day-to-day -day operations. With it being the only sit-down restaurant in town, it had built a little excitement with the residents of Caprock Canyon, 
and it looked to Winnie like they were all attending the grand opening. Bear stepped back. Rock their socks off, sweetheart. Gabby joined her at the front. Quite the turnout. Yep. She took a calming breath and smiled. We want to thank all of you for coming out and supporting us. With that, she cut the ribbon and was treated to a round of applause. Winnie turned and hugged her husband. Thank you for believing in me. Always and forever, Mrs. West, he said and kissed her. I love you. She'd never been happier, and life had never been sweeter. I love you. This dream was better than any she could have imagined. The love of her life holding her as they faced the world together, hand in hand. This has been The Fake Girlfriend's Billionaire Match, a Caprock Canyon Romance Book 4. Written by Bree Livingston. Copyright 2019. Narrated by Lorena Hoops. Audio copyright 2022.